Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing well. My name is Katie Cush. I am an alumni relations officer, the RISD Office of Alumni and Family Relations. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're really excited to bring you the Creative Breakthrough Lab with Mitchell Ridgey. Um, just a few minutes, uh, I will introduce Mitchell in just a moment, but before we start, I just wanted to let you all know that you will receive a copy of this recording via email. Um, it may not come through until tomorrow, but I will send it and will also be up on the alumni website within a few days. So if you missed it, you'll, we, you will be able to watch the recording of it. I'm so excited to introduce Mitchell to you. Mitchell is um, a RISD alum. He graduated in 1978 with a degree in illustration. He's also an author, a speaker, and a thought leader in creative thinking, problem solving, and effectiveness. Mitchell is a highly respected creative professional for over 40 years, and he has expertise spanning the fields of art and design, advertising, marketing and communications, and professional development. Mitchell is the founding partner of Smart Storming, a New York City-based consulting and training company, and he's also the founder of the Creative Breakthrough Lab. The lab provides personal and professional development programs to help creators, innovators, and entrepreneurs level up their confidence, their skills, and effectiveness to achieve greater success in their work, career, or their business. As a student, Mitchell was the manager of the RISD Tap Room, and years later, he had the honor to serve as a member of the Rhode Island School of Design Board of Trustees from 2006 to 2009. So before I turn it over to Rich, uh, Mitchell, Rachel, sorry, I just wanted to let you know that we will be taking Q&A at the end, so please save your questions. And Mitchell, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. And first thing I want to do is say, live from New York, that's where I am, and uh, that's where this is coming to you from. And I just want to make sure that I, uh, that I acknowledge, I hope you're all safe and well. And what I'd love to do is just start off by you know, getting a sense of where is everybody at this point? Um, we're reaching a, a very large alumni audience. And I'm just really curious, if you would type into the chat box just your name and where you're, 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 you're sitting right now as part of this, this, um, this program. So if you can just start to, you know, let us know. And then Kate, Katie, if you could just you know. Yeah, they're coming in fast and hard. Wow. All right. They're from all over the place. So we have Emma, who's from Valencia, Spain right now. Hi, Emma. Wow. Um, we have Sylvia from Oakland, California. We have uh, Lisa from Providence, Rhode Island. Lori wow. in Pittsburgh. Let's see. Uh, Petey Becker from Vermont. We have Yolanda coming to us from Miami. You guys are all over. Um, yeah. San Diego, California. We have Marie Hello. from Los Angeles. We have Lynn from Jersey City. What's up, Jersey? Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> wow, you guys are all over the place. We have Jennifer from Southern Illinois. We have Sylvia from Milan. Um, my goodness. Wow. There. There. Oh, geez. Rio right. de Janeiro. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm going to end with that one. Okay, okay. Well, thank you all for joining. And this, this is what the, this is really amazing. I'm going to um, uh, actually end, see if I can stop this share. Uh, yes. Oh, Katie, can you stop the share? I'm sorry. My cursor is not working here. Oh, um, I okay. don't think I can, Mitchell. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. well, <laughs> All right. Well, I was going to uh, show you my face, um, but what happens is when we're in presentation mode here in Keynote, uh, my cursor goes away. So, but if I figure out how to do that, then we'll, we'll, ah, uh, let me see if I can do this. Does that work? Oh, yeah. now I see you. There you are. You yeah. You okay, great. Oh, I know what I needed to do. Give us a, we're going to be very informal here because uh, I'm a little <laughs> bit of a novice doing this. And matter of fact, uh, so you can see my face now, right? Yes, I can see yes. it. Okay, now I can see it. Great. All right. So anyway, I wanted to say hello uh, personally here. And uh, again, we're coming from New York. And just to let you know, I do not have a fabulous penthouse apartment that overlooks uh, Manhattan like this. Um, uh, it actually looks more like, um, let's see. See if I can turn this off. Yes. So this is my uh, apartment here in New York City. And um, so anyway, welcome to the session. And we're going to get back to, to it right now. And uh, let's see. OK. Boom. <laughs> 
All right. So what I wanted to acknowledge was that not very long ago, um, uh, I used to do these live. Uh, actually, when Katie and I first started talking, we talked about doing uh, a local uh, RISD event here in New York, doing the Creative Breakthrough Lab for some participants here. But what's kind of amazing is due to uh, circumstances, we now have the opportunity to, to go global with this. Uh, as you know, we can tell, we have people in Spain and all over the place, which is pretty amazing. And, um, you know, the interesting thing about doing this virtually, this is actually the first time I'm doing the Creative Breakthrough Lab, this particular program uh, in a virtual setting. And, you know, part of what it is that makes this lab really special uh, in person is that there's a lot of opportunity for sharing, for partner sharing, for uh, people to share with, with the, the collective there. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to replicate that here, but we're going to be doing it through the chat box and through some polls. So what I encourage you all to do is to be really um, engaged in, in it and to contribute uh, where you can. And I'm going to do my best to really create that sense of community. Um, and, and I'm glad we all got a little bit acquainted just at the beginning here. So um, we're going to now move on to the program here. And you know, what I want to do is just sort of acknowledge where we are at, uh, at, this, at this point in history. You know, we're at this really unprecedented time of uncertainty. And what happens during times of uncertainty is people tend to focus on one or two things. And you may find yourself thinking of both these things occasionally. But, you know, the first thing is that people tend to focus on what's wrong. What's different? What's what's inconvenient? What's frightening? Uh, there's a lot of that in the news today. The other thing you could focus on is, wow, things are so weird. What's possible, right? So the thing to appreciate is that in times of uncertainty, that's when creativity and innovation really flourish. They really flourish when 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 things are 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 full of unknowns. And, uh, you know, right now, I'm considering this period uh, a reinvention renaissance, just like the Dark Ages, the Dark and Middle Ages preceded the, the renaissance that gave birth to, to, you know, Michelangelo and Bernini and, 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 my, and uh, uh, all the other great renaissance painters. Um, we're in a similar time when when you look around you hear it in the news you might be reading about it in the newspapers that everybody's in either a reinvention mode or a macgyver mode okay where they're 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 trying to to fabricate things on the fly and make things that existed in one context work for another context so you see it happening in healthcare the nature of work is is changing like rapidly everyone's now working remotely business is, is changing i mean it, manufacturing, they, they're turning car plants in, into, uh, um, you know, they're making metal, uh, medical equipment. Uh, education, as you're, you know, many of you might be experiencing is, is changing. But most importantly, your career and your business is changing. Now, a lot of people are saying, God, I can't wait until we get back to normal. Now, the thing is, we're not going to be going back to normal if you put quotes around that, because normal is changed. We are now moving towards the new normal. Things, when, when the country does reopen, it's gonna look dramatically different than it did before. And so will uh, our work, our careers, and our businesses. And nobody, nobody can really predict what it's gonna look like, but all we know is that it's going to be different. And if you look at it as, as an area for opportunity, then you'll thrive. If you look at it as something that goes against, uh, you know, it's outside your comfort zone and you resist it, uh, you're probably not going to thrive as well. So, um, you know, we're here at the Creative Breakthrough Lab. And what I would love you to do is to use this as an opportunity to really think about, you know, what is it that you're up to right now? You know, whether it's, you know, in your work, what you're doing or how you're working, or it's in your career. Maybe there's a, there's a, your career has, has, has hit a pause button and, and you want to take it to another level or your business, uh, trying to reimagine how it, it's going to look uh, once uh, 
the quote unquote, the, the nation opens again, whatever that means. So um, please feel free to use this uh, program as a way to really explore that. And, you know, we'll go into that in a little bit of a moment, but I just want to tell you just a little bit more about me. Katie did a great job, but just, you know, just to, this is what I would do if we were live in a room together. I would, I would, you'd be seeing me, you'd be feeling me. Um, but since we can't do that, this is a little bit more insight. So, yes, I graduated RISD uh, a long time ago in the, in the pre-digital age. And uh, I started out as an illustrator. This is one of the illustrations I actually did for my portfolio to get into RISD. Uh, it's a pen and ink drawing that I spent, you know, countless hours on and, and I actually used it as part of my uh, application. Uh, I was an illustrator for many years doing books and, and newspapers and magazines, but eventually my illustration career led me into advertising. I was hired by an ad agency to actually draw storyboards and comps. Uh, and then the longer I was in advertising, the more I got interested in, in marketing and strategies, and it just seemed to be a natural fit. So uh, I wound up doing that for quite a long time. And then through my evolution in advertising, one of the things is I attended a lot of training and development programs. And what I realized is that I love teaching and the two areas I feel the most passionate about is personal development and creativity and putting these things together. So everything I learned about personal development and everything I learned about creativity, I said, wow, we can create programs to teach people how to think more innovatively and also how to, uh, how to unlock more of their creativity. So uh, I started a company called Smart Storming, and basically we start off with brainstorm leadership training, and then we started to teach creative thinking. And I had the honor of working for some of the, the most innovative companies, as you can see, Capital One and Google and Under Armour. Uh, the photograph you see there is me leading an innovation workshop for NBC Universal. So I've done that for the last 10 years. And uh, I also wrote a book on brainstorming because none existed. And it's kind of amazing that I wrote a, a co-wrote with my business partner, a 320 page book, you know, and for somebody who's kind of dyslexic and ADD, that was really a major accomplishment. So, <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to give you a little bit more of a well-rounded uh, picture. Now, one of the things that was most profound for me in my years at RISD is, is I learned how to be a creative problem solver. And especially during freshman foundation, when if you remember back to your freshman foundation years, you know, probably most of you were either the best artist in your school or, or people used to praise you for being so creative. And then all of a sudden you go to RISD and you're now one of a group of people where everybody is the best in their schools. And, and when you go through Freshman Foundation, you really learn that talent enough is not enough to, to really be successful in the world, that you really need to be a creative problem solver. You have to be able to look at problems, see new opportunities, new, new potentiality in them, and also see ways to adapt, to reinvent, to evolve them. And when I looked at my career, and it's funny because this, as I was working on this presentation for you today, you know, I realized that, wow, I've had so many different incarnations that when I think about, you know, people having to reinvent themselves now for the, the new normal that's coming, I said, wow, I've been doing that for a long time. And many of those evolutions uh, have occurred during the most uh, dramatic changes uh, our company has experienced. So, you know, on the left, I started out from RISD with a portfolio, literally going door to door with my portfolio to, to try and get work. Then I went into advertising. And then four days before 9-11, I got laid off for my big, cushy corporate job as a, as a creative director at a major agency. Uh, and I decided not to go back to the corporate world as an employee. I reinvented myself as a consultant and did that for many years. And then within the economic crash of 2008, I said, well, you know what? I might as well start doing what it is I really love to do, which is teach people had to think more creatively. So I then went and started my consulting and training company. And just last year I said, well, now I'm at the point where I really just want to teach fellow creative people and entrepreneurs. 
uh, how to release more of their creative potential. And I started the Create a Breakthrough Lab. And now here we are at another major uh, inflection point in the history of the world. So wherever you are on your timeline, just know that that RISD education, that problem solving education really gave you the ability to, to reimagine, to adapt and to reinvent uh, your work, your, your career or your business. Okay, so let's move on now to the Creative Breakthrough Lab. So what I want to do is welcome you to this lab, and I mean really welcome you to it because I created the Breakthrough Lab as an opportunity for people to, to look at their creative process in a whole different way. And as you see, as we go through the program, you're going to look, you're going to get the opportunity to explore, to imagine and reimagine things. You're going to discover a lot of things about yourself as a creative person, as an entrepreneur, and also about the way you work. And they're really interconnected. And you're also going to have the opportunity to, to experiment and create something new and different for yourself. And what we'll be covering in today's lab, and there's a lot of, a lot of things I, I, I put in the program. Uh, you can almost think of this as you'll be drinking from a, from a fire hose rather than a, a water fountain here. But I wanted to make sure that I at least introduced you to, to what I think are some of the most important things for being successful as a creator and an innovator today. So what you're going to be learning today is, is uh, hopefully you've brought some kind of personal uh, challenge that you're working on. And it could be, again, it could be something you're working on or maybe you want to make a career move or something to do with your business. But if you can go through this course with that in mind as sort of your subject matter that, uh, that we'll be uh, doing all these different exercises on, now you'll get tremendous value out of it. So we're going to clarify what your challenge is, like where the breakdown's occurring. We're also going to work on your, your vision. We're going to help sharpen your creative vision goal for what it is that you want to, to achieve. We're going to strengthen that, that sense of purpose or mission that you may have behind your vision. We call this the why. So we really want to strengthen that why. Uh, we're also going to diagnose specifically where you may be experiencing breakdowns within your creative process, places that you may not even know you're having breakdowns. Uh, so we're going to do a, a powerful uh, sort of diagnostic assessment of, of some six different areas that affect your creativity. Also, you're going to be, as we go through this, you're going to discover a lot of new uh, insights about yourself, about your work, and about the way you work. And at the end, you're going to be creating your own action plan for transforming any creative breakdowns that are in your space into a breakthrough. And then at the end, if we have time, we're going to do, uh, we'll have time for some questions and answers. And I'm happy to do uh, some quick laser coaching. So when we get to the end of the program, uh, if there's any questions that yet you have, uh, I'll be happy to address them. Or if you want some kind of, uh, you know, new perspective on, on how to tackle a challenge. I'm happy to give that as well. So let me just talk for a moment about how to get the most out of this program. And the first thing is, you know, I want you to really think about being on the court and playing full out in each activity. We're going to go through, I believe it's five different uh, exercises or activities. Now you can do them very intellectually, or you can really get into it, really connect to your heart and mind, and really put your full self in it. Because the more you put into each of these exercises, the more transformative uh, effects you're going to get from them. They're, they're, very they're very simple, but very powerful exercises. And also open your mind to new perspectives and new ways of thinking. You know, we all, we all tend to get into thinking ruts sometimes or we're, we're in our comfort zone. So I'm gonna encourage you to, just for the next two hours is to just open your mind to new ways of looking at it. The next is I, you know, practice, I'm gonna encourage you to practice radical self-honesty. And what that means is when you hear words like procrastination or fear or self-judgment and you get like a little zots, like a little emotional response to it, try and push through that to see what, what's really there. Okay. And next is I'm going to encourage you to take the lid off what you imagine is possible for you to create or achieve. Uh, we're not all aware of it, but we tend to have sort of a self-contained lid. We, you know, we can imagine ourselves getting to a certain level, but it's hard for us to imagine what would be beyond that. Um, again, a lot, a lot of that has to do with our, our, our uh, comfort zone. So 
I'm gonna ask you to just imagine, take that lid off of what's possible. And really the goal for today is, is for all of us, we're gonna go through this program together as a group, you know, and we're scattered all over the world, which is kind of amazing. Um, but as we go through this together and, and, and grow and create breakthroughs together, just realize that each and every one of you is on your own personal journey within this greater journey uh, that we're all on together. And I just think that's really kind of cool. So, um, you know, again, I'd, I'd ask you to really be on the court and play full out in each activity. So we're going to start out now with a, with a quick poll because I'd like to get a sense of uh, what type of breakthrough you want to create today. You know, everyone here may be showing up uh, at a slightly different place. Uh, some of you might be trying to get a new project or career uh, off or business off the ground. Some of you might be overcoming a challenge in an existing project or in career or business. And some of you might be at the point where you really want to make a leap to your next level in your, in your, in your work or career or business. So um, what I'd love to have you do is, is just vote for the one that is closest to what it is that you're bringing here to the lab today. Okay, so the voting is going on. I should have some music <laughs> here. Oh, host and panelists can vote, it says. Can or cannot? Can't vote, that's what it says. Um. Oh, oh, you're the, oh, yeah. I'm seeing, oh. I'm seeing people are, people are responding. We have a decent amount of responses coming in. Oh, okay. Are you able to see the vote, uh, the poll, Mitchell? Right now it says host and panelists can't vote. No, I can't. Okay. Okay. Um, it looks like it's kind of leveled off, but 54% of our participants have said that um, they're looking to make the leap to the next level in their work, career, ah. or business. So over half the people are oh, they're ready to make that leap to the next level. Fantastic. And what are the other percentages? Uh, they are, let's see, 28% uh, is getting my new project, career, or business off the ground. Um, and 18% is overcoming a challenge in, in an existing project, career, or business. Great. Okay. Thank you. You can close the poll. Terrific. Thank you. Ah, now I see it. That's great. Okay, you can close that. All right, so let's, let's get started. <laughs> so we're about to, you're now gonna learn about what it takes to create a breakthrough. So what I'd like to do is start with some distinctions for you, because there's two words you're gonna hear over and over and over again uh, within this uh, program. And the first is, and you've probably heard it already a lot, uh, is the word breakdown. And what do we mean by breakdown? Well, in the context of the Creative Breakthrough Lab, it's the experience of getting stopped, blocked, or thwarted, a loss of forward momentum or project towards achieving a goal. So the simplest way to understand that is something stops you. You're trying to achieve something, some kind of result or, or a goal, and you get stopped or thwarted. That's a breakdown. And a breakthrough is the act of moving through or beyond an obstacle to achieve a breakthrough. Uh, to achieve a goal. So in other words, a breakdown is something that stops you and the breakthrough is, is, is moving beyond whatever it stops you. And it could be a quantum leap or it could be uh, just moving forward uh, with, with greater velocity. So, in, and there's different types of creative breakthroughs. Uh, the, 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 the first type is, is what most people think of. They, they think of a sudden appearance of a solution or a problem. It's like, Eureka! I've got it. I, I've got this big breakthrough idea, or I, or I have a. I, I suddenly see the way to move forward, uh, and it could also be a quantum leap in achieving a result or a milestone. You know, most people think of moving forward uh, in in a very linear way. You go from A to B to C to D, but sometimes you can quantum leap where you can go from A to D and then go from D to R. So you can skip all these intermediate steps because you have so much momentum and and uh, good fortune. Uh, or it could be a shift in attitude from discouragement to greater confidence. Sometimes you get so down and you feel stuck and you get very pessimistic and then suddenly you, you get this surge of, of, of confidence. 
or it could be an opportunity for partnership support or the resources you need to move forward with velocity. Sometimes you just meet somebody and you tell them what it is you're up to and they suddenly say, I know someone who can help you. And suddenly that person turns you on to somebody else who can unlock all kinds of, uh, of momentum and, and breakthrough results for you. Okay, so uh, there are many, many different types of breakthroughs. Now, we just wanna talk a moment about the creative process since that's what we're gonna be talking about in one way or another throughout this, this program. So I tend to think of the creative process as this, this big white canvas on which we can create pretty much anything we want. Usually it starts with an idea. We have that kind of aha moment where we get this idea for something we want to create. It could be a work of art, it could be a product, a service, a new business idea. And once we have that idea, our, our vision becomes to create that as a, as a new reality, as some kind of tangible future reality that somebody can actually experience, that we can actually do. And the minute you do that, you, you become aware that there's sort of like this gap that occurs between where you are now with your great idea, which just ex uh, exists as a concept, to what it is that you really want to accomplish in the future. Now, we tend to perceive, our, our normal perception is, oh, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do what it takes to, to make that happen. We tend to think of this in a straight line. And all we gotta do is figure out what are those step-by-step -step things we need to do. So we figure, okay, I gotta do a, I got to do B, I got to do C. And we tend to think of this again as a very linear process. But in reality, this gap looks more like this. It's full of ups and downs and, and, and twists and turns and breakdowns and, and, and failures and, and, and restarts. And uh, Scott Belsky wrote a great book about making ideas happen. He calls this part of the creative process the messy middle. And that's the part we, we all tend to struggle with at some point or the other. And if you drew a line through the middle of this and you looked at, at the top half of this where all those peaks are, those would represent actions you've taken that have produced the results that you wanna take. We, we usually refer to that as progress. We're making progress. So we have, and we feel elated. We get excited. We know something's working. We're figuring it out. We're rocking it. It's all good. Now, if you look at all of the, the, the valleys below that line, that's all of the actions or inactions, things we didn't do, right? That really uh, cause a loss of momentum and progress. And that's when things start to feel hard and you start to have self judgments about messing up or being a fraud or, or just resisting the whole process. So this is, this is typical. This is normal. Everyone goes through this. Even the most brilliant inventors go through this, this up and down process. So what I want to introduce you to today, and this is the, the, what the Create a Breakthrough Lab is based on, is a four step process that will help you, if you go step by step through this process, that's gonna help you level up your ability to succeed. And the first step is, is working on your vision. It's, it's really clarifying what it is that exactly it is you wanna create. The second step is to really connect deeply with that driving purpose of why do you wanna create that vision? You know, what, what, what is the why behind it? What's your sense of mission or purpose? The third step is to really get an understanding about like, what's going on in your creative process when you get stuck? You know, what are the things that you want to understand? What are the things that really help you succeed? And what are the things that, that sort of cause you to, to stall out or stop? And then the fourth step is to make sure you take aligned action so that you can move forward powerfully with, with uh, velocity and confidence. So those are the four steps and we're gonna go through each of them today. And we're good. before we begin that, we'd like to do another poll. And this poll is, we just wanna get a sense of the room. If we were in a room together, uh, we're in this global room together, uh, we just wanna get a sense of, you know, what are some of the common breakdowns that, that you might be experienced when you strive for a goal? And things like it could be self-doubt or self-judgment or imposter syndrome, uh, could be procrastination, not doing what it is you know you should do, it could be a fear of failure or worse, uh, fear of being judged by others. Or it could be maybe you're lacking some know-how or skills or experience to do what you need. Or it could be a lack of support. So let's vote now and 
see, so let's see where the room is. Let's see what, what emerges from this poll. About half of our participants have voted. They're coming in fast, which is great. Thank you, everybody. Great. Fast and furious. That's what I like. <laughs> Okay, so what's, what's coming up for you? Let's we are 85% uh, have voted at this time. Okay. Um, I'll give it another about 10 seconds before we close it, but it seems like the majority of folks are dealing with something I deal with, which is self-doubt, self-judgment, ah. imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, I'm going to end the poll now and share the results so you guys can see it. Okay, uh, by, by far. Okay. Yeah, self-doubt. Procrastination, fear of failure, right? All right. So that's that's pretty typical. Just so you know, um, you know, I, I do a lot, a lot of corporate training, and I and I ask, I've asked tens of thousands of of uh, professionals, you know, what what types of issues do they struggle with, and 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 it really is that that inner voice, I'll call it that, that's the self-doubt, that's the self-judgments, uh, things like that. And we're gonna deal with that a little bit here. Uh, I'm actually working on a program that's gonna just deal with that, but that's in the future. Um, but if you do these four steps, a lot of that self-doubt or fear or, or whatever it is that's holding you back will uh, lessen dramatically, okay? Because we're gonna, we're going to do things that are really going to build your creative chops here. So our game is to transform any breakdown, anything that shows up in your life, in your work, in your business, your career. Uh, we're going to transform those into breakthroughs. You're going to learn how to do that uh, today. And the thing that it's really important to get in touch with is that we all have a breakthrough story. Uh, breakthroughs aren't something that happen out there. We've had many, many breakthroughs uh, in our life. We just may not see them that way. And really, the way to really get in touch with these breakthroughs, because we want to make, really, the point I want to make is that you've got everything you need inside of you to create a breakthrough at any level, anywhere, uh, at any time. So what I wanted you to do is to think of a time when you felt something was impossible, right? But you were able to achieve it anyway. All right, so really think about that. Just take a moment to think about that. And uh, I'm just gonna tell you a super mini quick example. Uh, my wife, Liz, uh, just recently graduated from a grueling Columbia University uh, School of Engineering full stack coding program. And the amazing thing is uh, she's, she's not a spring chicken and she's got no technical background. She's a managing director of our company and she's got a, a background in fashion and she decided to future-proof her career by, by enrolling us in this full-stack coding program. And she was in a class with 20-year-olds that were all coders. And over the course of many, many, many uh, weeks, uh, she did whatever it took to get through it. Uh, there were times when she thought she might not be able to, to make it through it, but she did. And she came through with flying colors and even won an award for her team for being the most aligned group and having the best group chemistry. So she's a, she became a real leader. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to hear from some of you. Um, and I'm gonna introduce a concept here because we don't have the ability to have somebody stand up and share. So I'm gonna ask you to think about your breakthrough story. And if you could put that in one sentence, just what was it that you accomplished, right? That you thought was, was extraordinary. And um, we're going to do is say, what was your biggest breakthrough success? So put it in a one line sentence and put it into the chat. And then we'll have uh, Katie share some of those. So what was it that was your biggest breakthrough success? Um, Christine said that her biggest breakthrough success was starting her own company. Wow. Yeah, that is so cool. Oh, and Sylvia said that starting and successfully running a business was her biggest breakthrough. Oh. Uh, somebody said getting into RISD, which is great. Uh, <laughs> exhibiting my work internationally. Um, learned Italian language to study shoe design in Italy. That's wonderful. Wow, that is awesome. Chelsea became a personal chef. 
goal of mine. That'd be wonderful. Wow, you can make those scones. <laughs> <laughs> um, publishing a book with a large publisher. That's a great one. That's amazing. Wow. wow. Yeah. This These is are so all great. Yeah. Here, give us, give us one or two more. Let me see. Um, getting collected into the San Francisco MoMA Artist Gallery. That's wow. wonderful. Um, making a film for a charity that was a winner at a festival. That's great. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Graduating are... RISD grad school with no prior art training in my late 30s. Whoa. Yes. Right, that's great. <laughs> Boy, wow. talk about talk about a breakthrough. That is that is awesome. These are great. That's great. Boy, Let's see. Can... Last one. Starting an architectural practice, designing future furniture lines. That's wonderful. Yeah. Raising a kind child. Yes, Lynn. Oh, that's the most a good one. The most important breakthrough of all. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. These are great. That's great. Wow. Thank you, everyone, for sharing those. I'm, I'm sorry we can't share all of them. Um, maybe someday we'll do an all-day breakthrough lab, and, and we will, we'll have time to do it. That's fantastic. All right, so we're going to now roll up our sleeves, uh, everybody, metaphorically, or you can do it literally, wherever you are. And uh, we're going to do a discovery process. And what we want to do is, um, is to, to, to really look at what's the biggest challenge you're currently facing uh, in a project or work or a business. If you're getting your business off the ground, uh, what's a challenge you're facing? If you're trying to make your that leap to that next level for you uh, in your career or business, what what's in the way for you there? And what we're gonna do is, is we're actually gonna do an exercise. Now, um, many of you should have received a PDF uh, that we sent out uh, this morning. Uh, and in that PDF, there are some worksheets. And uh, we provided those just because it might make it a little bit easier. I don't know if anyone's had the time to, to print those out and have them with them. If not, you could just use a piece of paper uh, and, and follow along. And that goes for all the exercises here. You may see an actual form on screen, uh, but don't worry about that. Don't get hung up on it. Just, you know, a diary, you know, any, any place, any notebook or any place you want to write it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the, the, the five steps of this first. Uh, don't write anything down yet, because I just want you to get the full picture of it. I'm then going to give you an example of one that I filled out, and then we're going to then have you fill out your uh, challenge uh, statement. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do later, after I'm done with this, is, is to really think about what is it that you set out to do, create, or achieve? What was your goal? And it may sound like a really simple question, but it's really important to clarify or at least condense down uh, exactly what it is that you're, you're up to, what game you're playing. And then, so you started out to do something. The second question is going to ask you, what happened? What actually happened? Okay. You said, I'm going to do this. What happened? The third step is going to be to see if there was any kind of breakdown that occurred. Usually when we set out to do something, we run into something. <laughs> it's just the way things are. We, you know, life is full of flows and blocks, blocks and flows. And that's, that happens a lot in the creative process. The, th the fourth question is going to ask you where, uh, when and where did your breakdown occur? Because we don't really think of it this way, but breakdowns do happen at a very specific point in space and time. Uh, and just understanding where that happens sometimes can give you clues to, to workarounds. And then the last part of this is going to ask you to label your breakdown with an objective name or title. Uh, we don't want to make it emotional. We don't want to infuse it with any kind of blame or fault or, or anything like that. You just want to really look at this clinically. Don't forget, this is the Creative Breakthrough Lab. So we want to look at things objectively. You know, so you're going to label it with something like, you know, maybe it's a lack of know-how or I got discouraged or I just don't know what to do next. I got stopped because I didn't know what to do next. Okay, it's really going to be very simple. So um, that's what we're going to be up to. So let me give you uh, an example. I actually filled this out myself, and this is what came up for me. So what did I set out to do or create? It's I wanted to create a sales funnel for marketing my new e-course on Facebook. You know, sales funnels are all the rage these days. And I'm not technical, <laughs> but I'm a very much a, a DIY type of person. So. Uh, I actually uh, wanted to do that. So what, what actually happened? Well, I took the time, I designed, I wrote, and, and created a, a sales funnel in a program called Kajabi. So what kind of breakdown uh, occurred? Well, I had it all done, and then I went to test my sales funnel, 
And the call to action button, that's that little button that you press uh, to get something, to get a response. Uh, it, the link didn't work. Uh, and I tried to fix it and I tried to troubleshoot it. And no matter what I did, uh, I couldn't get it to work. So when and where did that occur? Well, it happened yesterday afternoon in my studio. I'm sitting here in my studio working away and it just didn't work. So what label did I put on that breakdown? Uh, you know what, if I distilled it all down and took out all the self-judgment about how stupid I was and why couldn't I figure things out, really below all that was just, you know what, I really don't have the technical understanding to do this. <laughs> I'm trying to do something that's way above my, uh, my, my knowledge and experience there. So, so that's what my challenge statement looked like. Okay, it became very clear. So now I want you to work on yours. I'm gonna give you about uh, a minute for each one of these. So just jot down uh, whatever your answer is. So the first one is, what is it that you set out to do, create, or achieve? What was your goal? So in a sentence or two, just write out, what was it you know, that you tried to do? Do you wanna, you wanna get a promotion in your career? Do you wanna start a new business? Or do you want your business to go to the next level? Uh, you wanna start a new product line? Um, whatever it is that, that's there for you. So just in, in a sentence or two. Just what is it that you set out to do, create, or achieve? Okay, give you about another 30 seconds. Okay, so we're gonna move on. If you're not done, you can come back to this uh, later. So now we'll go on to the second part of it is what actually happened, okay? So again, you set out to, to do something, to create something or achieve something. So what actually happened? Did you do it? Did you create it? Did you achieve it? Um, did you achieve some of it? Did something break? <laughs> Are you missing something that stopped you? So what actually happened? Again, this could be a one sentence answer. Okay, we're gonna go on to the next question, which is what breakdown occurred? Now, it doesn't have to be a major breakdown. Maybe you just kind of got stopped a little bit. Maybe uh, you, you, you pro procrastinating a little bit about doing whatever the next step is. Uh, maybe you ran out of money or time on something. Um, what kind of breakdown occurred? Maybe people are judging what you're doing so just think about what is it that's, that if there's any kind of breakdown that's in your space right now. And try and be as specific as you can. All right, so we're gonna go on to the next one. Now, this can be really brief, when and where did the breakdown occur? Now you might say, oh, I don't know. It just happened. But just try and think back to when you felt you got stopped or you, know, the, you, you lost momentum or velocity in what it is you were creating. And you may, you may, it may be around some event that happened or maybe you just put something down and you're, you're just having trouble getting back to it. So just try and think of where in space and time that might have occurred. And next, you want to, let's create a label for what that breakdown is. And you want to, let's make a, a very objective title or, 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 or a label. And it could be as simple, again, as like a lack of know-how or discouragement or not sure what to do next. Just try not to put any kind of judgment in that label. We want it to be just what it is. Nonfiction. <laughs> okay, great. So again, if you haven't finished any part of this, you can come back to this at, at another time, but we just wanted to give you the experience of, of really clarifying what your challenge is. Oop. Okay, sorry about that. 
So now, now you have a document that should really clearly tell you what it is that, that you know, what, what you set out to do and what occurred and when it occurred and kind of gives you an idea of exactly what you're dealing with. So now use that as we go through the rest of the breakthrough lab is kind of your subject matter, okay? That's the thing we're gonna be um, dealing with a lot. So we're gonna now move into each of the four steps that are gonna help you close that gap between where you are today with your idea and, and where it is you wanna be in the future. So step one is all about leveling up your creative vision. Oop, see, and now we're at the first step. And so we're gonna clarify your vision. So this, is really about getting clear, getting crystal clear on what exactly it is that you wish to create, do, or achieve. And it's important because this is a great quote from Napoleon Hill um, that just says, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. You see, our minds are like a great simulation laboratory. We are the only species that can, can really future gaze and, and think about something that doesn't yet exist and we can create it in our mind in such a way that we can feel it and, and, and almost conceptually walk around it and, and see people interacting with it. So it's really amazing. And the clearer that vision is, the, the easier it is to create that. So here's why your vision's important. Your, your vision's important because it serves as your blueprint for the future reality you intend to create. Again, you're the architect of whatever this, this great vision is. It also serves as your North Star to help you navigate the unknown from where you are today to where you want to be in the future. Remember that gap we talk about? How do you navigate that when you're lost, when you're in the ups and the downs of everything? It's like you can look off in the horizon and go, I need to go in that direction. I may feel lost, but at least I know that this is the direction that I need to go in. Uh, also, it inspires, and this is really important, is that it inspires other people to join you. When you share your vision with people and they get lit up, they see what you're doing, you know, they, they get excited and, and they want to support you and they want to share their ideas and, and their contacts and, and contribute. They'll contribute their knowledge, they'll contribute their resources to you. Hell, if it's a good enough idea, they'll give you money. I mean, it's like, it's amazing what people will do when they get excited about your vision. And the simple fact is the more vivid and real that vision is, uh, the easier it is to create in the world. There's a great quote from Tony Robbins that really captures this, the essence of this. And he says, the first step is to zero in on precisely what you want to achieve because wherever your focus goes, your energy flows. That's sort of a big mantra for him. Wherever focus goes, energy flows. When you put your entire focus on something that really matters to you, when you can't stop thinking about it every day, this intense focus unleashes a burning desire that can help you obtain what otherwise, uh, what might otherwise be out of reach. Wow, that's really powerful. Now, Stephen Covey, who is the author of the, the best-selling book, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of his earliest principles in the book is about beginning with the end in mind, to begin any project with the end in mind. And really he's talking about that sort of future gazing uh, necessity for whatever it is you want to create. And he writes that all things are created twice. First, they're created as a mental concept. Again, this is that, that internal mental blueprint we talked about. Then they're created in the real world. So if we use this analogy, you imagine this amazing monument that you want to create and you you visualize it so fully that it becomes easier to create in the, the real world so that's the importance of your vision so we're going to do an exercise now where we're going to ask you to sharpen your vision and here's how it's going to work so this is all about visualizing what's possible for you so i'm going to ask you now to close your eyes and just listen to my voice. <laughs> and I'm gonna ask you to visualize the project or thing you're inspired to create or achieve. And I really want you to see if you can, you can see it in your mind's eye, if you can connect with it, the emotion of it. Okay, so just take a moment, really connect with that. Great. So now I want you to imagine what if you had no limitations 
whatsoever, right? If you had all the time, all the money, all the resources, and all the support you needed, what would you create or achieve? So really think about it. We're taking off all limits. Take that lid off your thinking. You have all the time, all the money, all the resources, all the support. What is it that you could ultimately create or achieve? So now what I'd like you to do is open your eyes and to create a brief vision statement describing that new possibility. Give you a few minutes for this. So really imagine, you have no limits. What can you create? Think about that. How exciting is that? Think big. Think much bigger than you would normally think. Okay, I'll give you another 30 seconds. Okay. So hopefully you've been able to create a, uh, an exciting vision statement for you. And if you haven't finished it, uh, again, after this program, you can go back and, and dimensionalize it more. And, uh, and I always challenge people to, you know, once you've come up with your vision, to see if you can make it an even bigger, better vision. So, uh, but that's a, a different exercise. So I just wanted to share with you what my vision was. I, I worked in my vision for, for quite a long time. And what, I, what really ultimately emerged for me is my vision was to help creators and entrepreneurs to unlock all the creative genius within that the world has yet to know. And behind that was the belief that the problems of this world are not gonna be solved through linear thinking. They're going to be solved through bold leaps of imagination. And it's going to be the creators and the entrepreneurs and the innovators uh, that are going to make that happen. And there's all this creative genius that, that goes unexpressed in the world and that we all have trapped within us. And that became my vision of, of what it is that I want to do in the world. I want to be part of helping to unlock all that creativity. So I'd like to do another one sentence power share. Uh, again, it, it, we'll pretend we're in our virtual classroom together and uh, instead of standing up and, and, and presenting uh, what your vision is, uh, I'd love you to put it down in a one sentence power share. Uh, just what is your vision? Just the essence of what that vision is that, that you wish to create. And uh, if you could just put it into the chat window, uh, we'll have Katie uh, read some of them to see what it is that you've all come up with. Uh, Barney says, intentional community, uh, quote, eco-village. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see. Emma is looking to create a global movement. Wow, great. Uh, Ram is looking to create a billion dollar business. Wow, yeah. I'm thinking big, I like that. <laughs> You've you um, done very well in the thick, much bigger. <laughs> uh, Chelsea would like to write and publish a cookbook. Um, Great. Anne Nolan would like to design and produce knitwear using ethically sourced yarn. Ah, 
That's right. great. Um, Tiffany would like to create a VR world of my children's book idea. That's oh, cool. wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, Selma, Rachel would like to, uh, the exploration of women's issues through painting and textiles. Mm. Um, let me see. Monica wants to put out a coffee table photography book on international graffiti. That sounds awesome. Mm. Yeah. Wow, especially now. There's so much good graffiti. <laughs> Um, Jennifer would like to provide meaningful arts education to her community and develop a culture of creativity. Great. Yeah. Wow. I am, I am so inspired by your vision. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. I wish we, again, I wish we could have everybody share. Um, and in our all day version, we will. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. So I just want to share with you really quickly um, some, I, I call these power tips because they could really uh, 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 ramp up the, the effectiveness of, of your vision. It can take it to a whole nother level. And I'm a really big fan of uh, vision boards. And what you're looking at in this photograph, this is my actual workspace here and my vision board that I'm staring at right now. And this vision board has helped me create this program to deliver to you today. So this is really kind of full circle for me, which is really great. And what a vision board does is it really brings your goal to life. And a vision board can be made up of, of words or, uh, or quotes and images. Uh, it doesn't have to be done in, in a very you know, linear way like I did it here. A lot of people just kind of make a big montage. Uh, but what it does is it provides you a constant reminder uh, like this visual, I call it a visceral reminder because, you, you know, I respond emotionally to all these pictures that keeps you focused and motivated. And when you keep it in front of you every day, it just reminds you. Now, my, my vision board is, I made it into four parts just because I, I tend to think uh, in, in modular ways. Uh, but, you know, the top left part has all the thought leaders that I admire and who I listen to their podcasts. I, I read what they write. I, I, I get their programs. Uh, below that, in the bottom left-hand side, those are the communities uh, I, I desire to serve. And you can probably see the little RISD logo uh, down there, uh, as well as the Creative Mornings and the Adobe. I say my people, are, most of them use Adobe software. Um, so that's who I want to serve. The upper right-hand side is really kind of funny. Uh, there are images of me uh, presenting them with groups, and I don't do that out of ego. I do that to remind myself that I've done it and can do it. So that's my constant reminder to get myself out there and be with people, not stuck here in, 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 in my desk and in my head all the time. And then the bottom right hand part of it just has some aspirational lifestyle um, uh, images, uh, travel to Rome, um, you know, uh, a bigger apartment. I live in a a typically small New York City apartment, so I'd like a big apartment, maybe a place in the country, travel, art, all that stuff. So anyway, that's just, for me, it's, it's, it's my full circle of, of the things that inspire me, the, the kind of life I want to lead. The second tip is to share your vision with others. Don't, don't keep your vision quiet in your head. Uh, really what you want to do is you want to share your new possibility with others. And the reason for that is because it becomes more real when you share your idea with people and suddenly you look in their eyes and their eyes light up and they get excited about it. And, and it inspires them again to support you in, in whatever ways. Like when I tell people, I wanna create the Creative Breakthrough Lab and I tell them what it's all about, they're like, that's so cool. How can I help you? How can I join? So that's what naturally happens. You enroll people in, in supporting your efforts. So I would encourage each person uh, uh, here today to share your vision with at least five other people by the weekend. Okay, it's Thursday. So by Sunday night, share whatever vision or whatever it is that you're up to with, with other people. And then see, see if it feels like more real to you because the more people you share with, the, 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 it's going to come alive for you and it's going to come alive for them. Great. So that's, that's our visioning part, clarifying our vision. Next, we're going to go to purpose, and this is all about, step two is all about leveling up your motivation. This is, this is the determination. We wanna, we wanna take it from a, from a five to a 10. And the way we do that is by strengthening your why, what's called the why. 
And this is really all about your purpose, the purpose behind it. Like, what's that driving force that's behind the vision? Like, you're excited about this vision, but it's probably more about, it's not about a career advancement or making money. Yeah, there might be a part of that, but there's, there's something usually from the soul within that. The soul is longing for something or, or calling to you to do something there. So that, that's what the why is, is all about here. And there's this great quote by Vince Lombardi that I, I, I tend to think of, especially when I'm procrastinating, that success demands single-minded purpose, right? The singleness of purpose. Success demands singleness of purpose. And that's really what this host section is about, is to really strengthen that, that muscle. But why? So what, why is the why so important? Well, it's because when your why is big enough and strong enough, and you feel it deeply enough, you're gonna, it's gonna lead you to find your how. Because sometimes we set off on these big, big missions in our, in our life, but we don't know how we're gonna do that. But they say when your why is big enough, you'll find your how. It's gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna find it. You're not gonna settle for not figuring it out. So we're gonna do uh, another poll. And this is really to get a little bit of a sense of, so you know, you have a vision now, and I want you to really feel into that vision and say, how would you rate the strength of your current why the behind that vision? Okay, so is it, you know, and again, it could be anywhere on the spectrum from, you know, I got a vision, but I don't really have a strong sense of purpose about it. It's kind of like something I would like to do, and that's fine, there's something wrong with that. Or you could say, well, it's pretty strong, but it could be strengthened more. Or you could say, you know what, it's Iron Man strong. I have nothing in the way of accomplishing that. So let's, let's get a sense of where you all are with your whys, okay, on the spectrum of possibilities. 70% of our participants have voted so far, this is great. Wow, you guys have strong yeah. intention, I love that. <laughs> Currently right now, 54% uh, say pretty strong. All right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Just going to give it a few more seconds. We have 85% have voted. What I love about this, this group is you guys are really on the field. You're playing. You're playing. You're full in. I can feel you. Okay. There we go. Here are our results. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Great. So, more than half of you have a, a pretty strong intent yet. It could, you know, it's funny, our intentions can always be, our purpose can always be strengthened. And that's a good thing. And those of you, you know, we, we, we have 29%, almost 30% of you, it's not very strong, but that's okay because this is the beginning of awareness about it, that the importance, hopefully you'll be taking away the importance of it. And we're about to do a, an activity now to help uh, strengthen that uh, intention. And then you guys with the Iron Man strong one, kudos to you. You guys are gonna rock it quickly. Okay, let's move on. So just really quickly, I elaborated some of these already about why your, your, your why is so important. You know, if you really just take away all the hype around it, it's because it ignites your passion. When you have a strong why, you wake up every morning with passion. Right, it energizes you to take action and it fuels your momentum, it keeps you going. Right, and the stronger your sense of purpose, uh, the stronger your courage and determination to overcome any obstacle in the way of achieving it. Remember, we said when your why is, is strong enough, you'll, you'll, you'll figure out your how. And strong purpose equals an unstoppable attitude, and that's what you want. Now, if you're hearing sirens in the background, that's because. We're in New York City. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's why your purpose is, is so important. So now we're going to do, uh, we're going to write a purpose statement, just like we did a vision statement. We're now going to do a, a, a purpose statement. And what I'm going to do is take you through this first. So don't write anything now. Then I'm going to give you an example of what I wrote, just to give you uh, some, some idea of, of how it can go. And then we'll come back and you'll actually do the exercise. So, and this is all about putting your purpose down on paper and not, not carrying it around in your head as some kind of vague concept. We wanna get really clear on what that purpose is. So we're gonna ask you to do in a, in a moment is, is to write a brief statement describing the why about what you wanna create or achieve um, 
you know, what, what about your inspiring vision or goal. And for those of you that, that, you know, it's not particularly strong now, that's okay, because maybe this is the time where you can really start to connect deeper. But we'll do that when we actually do the exercise. And I'm going to ask you to write it from a place of passion and excitement, not intellectual uh, airiness. Uh, I live in my head a lot, and uh, but when it comes to a purpose, you really want it to, to land in, in your heart. So we're going to try and capture the essence of why that uh, pursuing that vision lights you up. Okay. So I just want to share with you uh, a purpose statement. I, I just put this down because I really wanted to connect. Like, what what is that purpose? And for me, it became a mission. So when I say purpose, mission, or why, they're all pretty much the same thing, just different usages of words. So for me, my mission is to provide the inspiration, the programs and support creators and entrepreneurs need to level up their skills and confidence so they can achieve breakthrough results in their work or business. Wow, that really lights me up because I, again, I love personal development. I love creativity. I love teaching. I want to share the things that I've learned that help me uh, take the lid off what's possible for me to achieve. And I want to do the same for, for others. So that was my purpose. Statement. And, I, and uh, I worked on that uh, for, for quite a while. But we're going to now do, perhaps it's a first draft for you of, of a purpose statement, or it could be a, a mission statement. You know, companies have mission statements of why they exist. So now we're going to take a few minutes and, and I'm going to ask you to write a brief statement describing why you want to do or create or achieve this inspiring vision or goal. And again, trying to connect from that place of passion and excitement and, and really see if you can find that, that that essence of why pursuing this vision or goal lights you up. And again, go beyond money because I need money and, and go beyond, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur and go, go beyond the surface and just try to connect. Like if you really see yourself achieving that goal and you're having the greatest day of your life and people are congratulating you on it and somebody says to you, wow, you had to overcome so much to get here. What, what was your driving force? This is what you would write. You would say, I did this because, right? This is my why. So we'll take a few minutes and um, just write whatever comes up for you. And again, try and, try and connect to that. Like, what is it about it that lights you up? Okay, we'll do about one more minute. Okay, a few more seconds. Okay, so hopefully you were able to really connect to your why, what's behind uh, that vision that you want to achieve here. So, and again, the reason why it's important is because that's how you're going to find your how. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the how uh, a little bit later on in the program here. But having that driving force 
uh, is really uh, an important component here. So we'd like to share again. We'd like to look around this global room and, and have people share. So uh, if you could, distill that the essence of your why. You don't have to write anything very long, but, but just what is that, that nugget, that, that essence of, of what it is that you're up to? Why are you up to that? See if you can put it into a one sentence power share and then submit that to the chat window so that uh, Katie can then share it with all of us. Oh, we're getting some good ones. Um, oh, good, good. Let's see. Uh, Christopher says to make people laugh and feel good, which is what we need right now. <laughs> That's um, great. Tiffany uh, would like to create a sense of childlike wonder and awe in both children and adults and connect to people's emotions on a deeper level. Wow. Got that. I felt that one. Um, I'd like to take my inspiration and express it in an innovative, exciting, visual, interesting way and reach my audience. Great. Um, let me see. To improve people's lives and solve climate war climate change. Mm, nice. Change the criminal disparity of wealth. Oh, it went away. It went too fast, but I agree. Of wealth. In the world. <laughs> yes, I, I concur as well. Um, Emma says that she wants to help women see their bodies as beautiful and important. Mm. I love that. It's wonderful. That's really, I feel that. Pamela would like to share indigenous teachings on caring for the earth. Nice. Great. Wow. Yeah. Um, let me see. James would like to teach presentations of, to help others communicate the emotional impact of products rather than the object. Mm. Wow. Nice. These are great. These are great. You know, it, it's this is why I love doing doing programs with RISD because you don't get responses like this <laughs> from civilians uh, in the corporate world. It's it's really amazing. These these are really so creative. Great. All right. Well, thank you for sharing, and uh, we're going to move on. We have a lot of territory to cover here. So now we're now getting up to the third step. Right? We, we've clarified our vision. We've now really connected to our, our purpose, to our why. So now we want to level up our awareness and, and get greater understanding about what are those things that may be impacting our, business, our ability to, to succeed with, with confidence and velocity. And now we're going to really focus in on understanding where your creative efforts are at the effect of the breakdown. Now, if you remember, I said earlier that, you know, breakdowns occur at a specific place in time, right? Through, or there are certain reoccurring things that happen, but they always occur in a physical space and time. So now we're going to look at six areas. Uh, I call them dimensions of the creative process that we don't always normally think about. But um, the purpose of doing this is, is some of the breakdowns we have are obvious. We know why. Uh, you know, maybe we get interrupted all the time, or maybe we don't have the resources we need. You know, it's, it's sometimes we, we call that painfully obvious. Uh, but then a lot of times it's non obvious or not so obvious. And there are things that are not easily seen. They're, they might be subtle, they may be tolerations, things we've been putting up with for so long that they're almost invisible to us. They're outside of our uh, deliberate awareness here. Um, and sometimes we call those blind spots. And what we're going to do today uh, is something really interesting. It, 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 this, is, this is sort of the MRI uh, part of the discovery lab, where we're actually going to do like scans of these six areas that affect the, the creative process. So we're going to find out um, exactly where uh, you're being impacted. And we're going to use this, this handy dandy tool um, that I created called the Creative Breakdown Audit. And what this is designed to do is just sort of identify areas where you're at the effect of a breakdown. That means there might be people in your space, there might be circumstances, issues, concerns. Uh, that's all things that you react to and you don't necessarily have power over those areas. You may be uh, uh, reacting to them, but not doing what it takes to change them. So here's how it works. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first, we're gonna ask you to think about your vision that you created here and your sense of purpose about that vision. And we're gonna then go through each of these six areas and I'm gonna take you through them one at a time. 
okay? So uh, we're gonna do that. And as we go through them, I'm gonna ask you to circle a number on the sheet <clears throat> that's gonna reflect a degree to which you feel at the effect of breakdowns in each area. Now, if you don't have a copy of the sheet, which most of you may not, that's fine. What you can do is just take a piece of paper and if you could just write down the topic, which the area, which would be time, environment, resources, support, distractions, and confidence. And we're gonna go through each one, so you don't have to write them down now. You can just put a number down uh, next to that. And then we're gonna ask you to just write a little uh, insight about it, okay? So we'll use this form for tracking uh, the process, but if you don't have it, don't worry about it. Uh, you can just do it uh, that other way. All right, and you're gonna note any insights. Okay, so you guys game to play? Good, all right, here we go. Oh, by the way, this is what it'll look like. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to give you a little uh, visual of it. So if you were using the, for, the form, it would look something like this, where you would, you know, you'd say time and you, you, you know, one end of the scale, it's like, well, it doesn't, you know, I'm really good with time. I, I really has no effect on my, on my productivity. Or on the other end, you might say, oh, I'm really bad with time management. So it's got a big effect on it and so on. Okay, so you'll, you'll get it as we go through it. All right, so we're gonna now go through these six areas and we'll do this pretty quickly. And when we're done with each of these areas, you're gonna just write down a number and whatever insight you have. So here we go. So the first area we're gonna talk about is time. Now, why are we talking about time and the creative process? Well, all acts of creativity occur over blocks of time, right? And you need un un uninterrupted blocks of quality time in which to create. And some of the time-related issues and breakdowns that can occur are you might have a lack of time, or you may have too many interruptions that eat up your time, or you may not have great time management, or you may put things off and squander time, like all this time goes by and it's like, oh no, I'm not done yet. Or you may have too many projects or meetings that go on that are, again, you know, interrupting your ability to do it. Uh, I know that meetings have become a big issue uh, for a lot of people because there are meetings all day and then they have to get back down to doing their work at the end. Or you may have trouble with time in terms of meeting deadlines that you're just not good with, uh, you know, meeting those deadlines. So just very quickly, and, and again, you can use intuition and best reasoning ability for this, is just put down a number or circle a number on a scale from one you know, I'm great with time. I have no breakdowns in time. I'm, I'm, I'm really great there. All the way the other extreme is, is 10 is, I am terrible at time. And, and whether I'm procrastinating or, or I get interrupted all the time or, or whatever it is that comes for you, then you would circle a high number, which means you're really at the effect of breakdowns in that area. And then write down a single, single sentence or two uh, about, you know, what insight comes up for you. And again, there's no right or wrong answers in this. So it's just what occurs to you as, as, you, as you think about your creativity in the, in the area of time. Okay, I'll give you a few more seconds. Again, you can do this very quickly. Okay, we're now gonna move on to the second area. And again, if, if you're not done writing, you can come back to this a little bit later. So next we're gonna talk about environment. And it's like, okay, what does environment have to do with your creative process? Well, all creativity happens within a physical space, right? So you need an inspiring and comfortable workspace in which to create. Now, there could be a lot of workspace related breakdowns that can occur. You know, things like you can work in an uninspired workspace or there's too many distractions. You may have a lack of privacy. There's a lot of open office uh, concepts where everyone's wearing headphones. Uh, that could be very distracting. Or it could be noisy or, or if you're light sensitive like I am, if it's too dark or if the air quality is bad. Or it may not be conducive to the kind of work you need to do. Or you may feel either too isolated or too crowded. So when you really think about it, you know, work environment. Like for me, I'll just share that, uh, you know, I, I got tired of working in my 
my home, our, you know, our work areas in our living room here off to the side. So I joined a, a co-working space and that made a big difference because I was out and about other people. So that was something that I made a big change that helped my productivity. Of course, can't do it right now, but we'll see. So write down, uh, just rate how much you're at the effect of some aspect of something in your environment and write down an insight, any insights that occur to you. Okay, got another 30 seconds. Okay, we're gonna end here and we're gonna move on to the next area. And that area is resources. And <laughs> I'm so glad I found this image because I thought it was so timely. <laughs> so why are resources important to the creative process? Well, <clears throat> We all need, whatever it is we're doing, we need stuff, right? We need, uh, there might be equipment, there could be, you know, could be software, it could be supplies, it could be things that we need in order to create whatever it is we want to create. Um, and sometimes we don't have those resources. So some of the resource related breakdowns that can occur are, could be a lack of equipment, it could be a lack of technology. Now, you don't really think of it, but time is a resource, so is money. Uh, and assistance, you may need help with things and you just don't have the resource you need. Or it could be a lack of, of expertise or, or guidance. So think about what resource that is, is creating an issue. You're missing some resource and, and it's creating a breakdown. So think about rate, how much you feel at the effect of breakdowns in this area and write down any insights. I know for me, uh, one of the resources I'm missing is, is uh, believe it or not, space. <laughs> need a lot more space in order to do the work I need to do. So that's one resource. It's also an environment thing, but it's really uh, comes up as a resource as well. Okay, about 30 seconds. Now we're gonna move on to the next area, which is support. And why support important? Well, for the simple reason that we're all limited in some way, shape or form because we only know what we know, what we've learned. We've only experienced what it is we've experienced in our life. So there are times when we need the advice or the experience or the expertise or the skills of others to succeed. So some of the support related breakdowns that can occur include a lack of knowledge. You don't know how to do something. It could be a lack of skills. Uh, it could be a lack of assistance. It could be a lack of finances. It could be a lack of encouragement. Or it could be a lack of community. You're feeling alone or isolated, or you really long to be part of something, a group or an affinity group of some kind. So think about you know, how much you're at the effect of breakdowns in the area of support and rate how, uh, how much you feel at the effect, whether it has little effect on your creativity or a big effect, and then write down any insight that occurs to you. Thirty more seconds. Now we're going to move on to the fifth area, which is distractions. <laughs> And this is really a, a fascinating uh, area to, to really look at. Uh, and the reason why we even have this area is because um, we live in such an attention 
core world now. Our attention is being pulled in 6,000 different directions at the same time, and, and we're constantly interrupted. And the thing is, you need periods of focused concentration in order to create whatever it is you want to create. And some of the distraction-related breakdowns that can occur, I'm sure you can all relate to these, is multitasking, doing more than one thing at once, off-purpose activities, interruptions, social media, spending time getting sucked into social media. Uh, it could be competing projects that you have or more interruptions by others. And in this area, we mean there could be people in your space that are crazy makers, uh, people who are what we call wet blankets, that, or people that just constantly uh, uh, you know, hijack your attention and it's hard to get free from that. So whatever it is that comes up for you, rate how much you feel you're at the effect of breakdowns in this area and write down any insights that may come to mind. Thirty seconds. Okay, we're now going to move to the sixth and final area, and this is the area of <clears throat> excuse me, confidence, confidence. And why is confidence important? Well, it's because all acts of creativity require courage and hard work and fortitude. I, I tell people you, it, it's really difficult to be a, a, a creator and an innovator and an entrepreneur if you're, if you're squeamish or you have thin skin and, and, and uh, give up easily. Um, and some of the confidence-related breakdowns that could occur in this area is, and these are all the ones that we talked about earlier, is, is you could have a fear of failure that, that is a breakdown for you or a doubt or self-judgment or procrastination or not asking for help when you need it. And that's something I'm constantly working on that I, I try and do a lot of things that are, are, are way above my capability, but uh, it takes a lot for me to ask for, for help. Um, avoiding responsibility. Sometimes we just abdicate uh, our responsibility or could be imposter syndrome, thinking that uh, we're, we're not really ready for prime time or somehow we're, we're less than other people. So this is a pretty emotionally charged area. So, you know, we may have a lot of breakdowns there, but really think about how much you feel you're at the effect of breakdowns in this area uh, and, and rate that. And then also write down any insights that occur to you. Another 30 seconds. Okay. So by now you've completed your creative breakdown audit. And I hope you found this an interesting exercise uh, because really what it does is it, it's, it gives you a, a, a visual way to look at the kinds of things that negatively impact your ability uh, to succeed with, with, with confidence and velocity. So now, you know, you may be wondering like, well, how do we transform these areas of breakdowns into breakthroughs? So here's, what, here's what's interesting about doing this exercise. If you, drew a line down the middle of that scale, you know, let's say around number five, right? What you would see is that the high ranking numbers, the eights, the sevens, the nines there, really indicate where you're at the effect of 
events and circumstances and people. And that just really means that you, you lack a certain amount of, of, of power or confidence there to make changes. <clears throat> so it interferes with your ability to be a strong creator. Now, the lower numbers, the twos, even the fours and the threes, indicate that, yeah, you may have things that are occurring in your space, but you're, you're a cause in the matter of, of doing whatever it is that you need to do. So you, you've retained a sense of power and you can achieve pretty much whatever you want there. So this just gives you a little bit of an indication. So the goal of this, oops, sorry, the goal of this exercise is to really identify those areas where you're at the effect and we wanna move those numbers lower. Right? So what we want to do is we want to go from being at the effect of things to being more the cause, more the creator of our events. And the way we're going to do this, oh, sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button there. <laughs> All right, we'll get, we'll get there. The way we're going to do that is later on, uh, a little later on today, we're going to be actually creating our action plan. And we're going to take one of these high scoring numbers and create an action plan to create a breakthrough there. So that's what we're gonna be up to shortly. So I just want to share with you really quickly my breakdown uh, area. And I think I mentioned to you before, it's in the area of support. And the problem, what I really got to see clearly, my insight was is that I tend to be a one man band. <laughs> and what I mean by that is uh, I can do a lot of things. I, I like learning and doing things. I'm very DIY. Um, and I kind of feel, I've come to just realize that uh, I do everything myself. I, I plan things, I write, I, I edit, I design, I Photoshop, I build, I test, I deliver. This entire program, I did everything in. I wrote it and designed it and blah, blah. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying like, wow, wouldn't it be really great to have a little team I could just offload this to and they'll bring it back looking like this. So what's the cost of having that uh, breakdown in my space? Well, the, the cost is... I'm always super busy working. I work long hours every single day. I'm always busy. And I realize that I'm so busy working, I'm not necessarily producing the results that I want. I'm not out doing as much training because I'm so busy preparing all the stuff I would need to go out and do training. So that's something I'm actively working on. And really the solution uh, is to find some freelance help or, or other team members, uh, virtual team members that I can then have to help me move things forward much, much quickly. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in the action um, step that's coming up next. So what we'd like to do is a, another poll, a real quick poll, just to see which area were you most at the effect of breakdowns. For me, it's support. For you, it may be totally different. So we put the poll up there and just, just click the, the one that was sort of at the top of your uh, list, the one that had the highest scoring number where you're most at the effect of a breakdown. Close to 75% have voted. That's great. That's great. Um, so far, it looks like distraction is leading the path. <laughs> great. We're going to give it about five to ten more seconds for those who haven't voted, if you want to get your vote in. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll, share the results. Ah, okay. So, distractions. Yes, we live in a highly distracted world. And so it looks like confidence, uh, and support, but kind of neck and neck as the second of it. And, and confidence is, again, it's, it's, it's a big, big topic. I wish we had the time to go into it more here. Um, and support, yeah, you know, we all need support. And that's, that's the, uh, you know, for some people, it's very easy to ask for support or, or to seek out support. For other people, uh, like myself, it, it, it tends to be a little bit harder. Uh, and Everybody here seems to be really good in time and, and your environments uh, seem to be very supportive. So, so that's great. So thank you for sharing that. That was uh, very, very enlightening. And we can kind of see where we all are 
uh, as a group here. All right, so we're gonna do a real quick uh, one sentence power share here. And it's just, would you share one insight you discovered during this activity? Okay, like for, you know, I shared with you that I'm a one man band and it's, it's not good. I gotta get, I have to seek out help. So what is it that, what insight sort of came to the top for you uh, doing this? And just pick one area where you, you, you really had like an aha moment. Mitchell, Suzanne said something that I like. She said, I have to disconnect my self-worth from my work. Um, can you say that again? That was gold. Sure. I have to disconnect my self-worth from my work. Wow. And for creative people, that is so hard to do. But it's so important to do that. So that's great. So thank um, you. Sure. Anita said that she needs to build her network, which... RISD Alumni Relations, we can help you do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Harmony said that she's her own worst enemy. She doubts herself all the time. I get that. Yep, self-doubt. Um, let me see. They're coming in so fast, I'm having a hard time reading them. <laughs> uh, Catherine says, lack of clarity in projects makes me more vulnerable to distraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Kristen says that she very much can relate to the one-man band syndrome. Ah, <laughs> I mean, I'm not alone. <laughs> That's great. Um, let me see. This is a good one. Michael said, I need to spend less time looking at other people's creations and spend time making my own. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Joy just said that she realizes she's not alone with these feelings. So that's nice to hear, Joy. That's, you know, we're, we're all in it together. That's, yeah. That, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. These are so great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, I wish we could read them all. But, yeah, me uh, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really touched by by so many of those. That's that's great. All right, so we're going to move on um, as time is moving on quickly here. So we're now up to to step four, and this is all about leveling up your power. You hear me use that word a lot, power, because we need to to be powerful creators and also to be productive creators. So we're now going to talk about. This is probably one of my favorite parts is it's about action because I have to kick my own butt so many times to to stay in action and uh, I've actually gotten pretty good at doing it so I, I, I'm trying to pass along what I've learned that can make a big difference so we hear this word action all the time yeah we got to stay in action we got to take continuous action it's all about action right but what do we mean by that well it's really interesting is if you look at the root part of that word action, it means to act, right? And that means to, it's, to act means it's, it's a deliberate expenditure of one's efforts, time, and resources to produce a result or achieve a goal. Sometimes we have to produce, you know, five or six or seven different results before we can achieve our goal, but we have to take action for each step of the way doing that. And there's a quote of, oh, I'm sorry, there's two reasons why taking continual action is so important. And the first, I love this chart. <clears throat> this is a, a chart that was in uh, Scott Belsky's book, Making Ideas Happen. And he, he, he wrote about how enthusiasm has a very short shelf life. And what that means is that we are the most excited, the most motivated, the most energized when our idea is new. When we have that idea, we get so excited, we write it down, we, we may sketch something about it, we, we run around, we tell people about it. And, and, and you can say that that's 100% enthusiasm at that moment. Now, if you start to take action right away, you know, you, you have a good chance of really realizing that vision. But if you start to take action and then stop taking action, what tends to happen is over time, the enthusiasm level starts to drop because other aspects of life start to take over. You start to get busy, you start to get distracted, there's more demands on you. And then by the time you go back to your idea, uh, and maybe many of, you, many of you have had the experience of you, you set something aside and you're really excited about it and then you go back to it and, it, and it, it's like you, you almost can't remember what, what was it I was so excited about or yeah, I know I was excited, but I don't feel that enthusiasm anymore. So that's why you want to, once you have a, a big idea, 
you want to start acting on it and stay in continual uh, action. And the second reason why is because action is your only access to achieving success. And there's a great quote by uh, Warner Earhart that says, it's important that you get clear for yourself that your only access to impacting life is action. The world does not care what you intend or how committed you are, how you feel or what you think. And it certainly has no interest in what you want or don't want. Take a look at life as it is lived and see for yourself that the world only moves for you when you act. So you could say there's an equation, right? That if you don't take action, you don't produce results. You can't produce results without taking some kind of action. And without results, there's no chance, there's zero chance of achieving any level of success. If you take a little action, you can create a little results, you may get a little success. But if you take no action, no results, you'll get no success. Again, the world only moves for you when you act. So we need to stay in constant motion, taking actions. So, you know, I've, I've looked at this in my own personal development and the work I do with uh, corporate, the corporate world. Um, and and um, really what I've come to believe is that the reason most people don't take action underneath it all is because they're missing something. There's something they need to keep going that's missing. And let me tell you what I mean by that. If we looked at breakdowns from this perspective of something missing, right? We looked at like, what's missing? It starts to make a lot of sense because, you know, you may have a breakdown because you don't know how to do something uh, or you may not know what to do. So you may not know what to do or you may not know how to do something. Like you're in uncharted territory. This happens to creative people all the time. When you go beyond you're really pushing and, and stretching and growing yourself. You're always going to always going to find yourself in the frontier of what you know and what you don't know and need to figure out very quickly. So what's missing? You're missing the how. You're missing the knowledge or the information or the data or more likely a step by step process that you need to keep going. Now I'm building courses myself right for online and there's a lot of technology involved with it and a lot of times i'm going along and i'm creating and i'm creating and all of a sudden it's like i don't know how to do something so i have to immediately start to figure out where am i going to find that information that's a big part of of uh of life today the second breakdown like well you may know what needs to be done but you personally may lack the skills or the support or the resources to do it Right? You may need a logo design, or you may need some Photoshop work, or you may need to, to know about a certain technique or, or how to do something and you don't know. So what you're missing is the who, what we'll call the who. And those are the people with the expertise, the skills, the support, or the resources you need. And the third breakdown might be, well, you know what to do, but you're just not doing it. Right? You may be feeling some fear or some doubt, or you might be procrastinating. So what are you missing? Well, if you get away from all the self-judgment that you may have heaped upon that, really what you're missing is the motivation. Right? You might be missing the emotional encouragement or the accountability that you need. You may need somebody to hold you accountable or someone to check in with. Uh, you know, I call it a breakthrough buddy. Um, you know, so that motivation might also be, you need that kick in the ass to get going, get off your, your, your butt and, and start doing what it is that you said that you want to accomplish. So there's lots of reasons why people don't act, but really whether it's, pro, whether it's internal like procrastination or a lack of knowledge or skill or information or resources, um, if you really look at all those things and then you put them into categories, these three categories, look what starts to happen. You can kind of sort it out and just realize that, wow, whatever's stopping you is probably in one of those three categories. It's either you need information on some level or you need help from somebody or you need 
some type of motivation or accountability. So, I mean, it sounds very simple, but you know, it's a big, it's a big concept. But to me, this gives me hope because what I realize is that there's always something you can do or as uh, uh, Marie uh, for Leo says, everything is figure outable, right? Once you know. So here we are, three categories, know how, you gotta find the how, support, you gotta find the who, motivation, you gotta find your kick in the butt. Your solution, the bottom line is your solutions are out there, you're not stuck, you're not stupid, you're not, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just, you need to find what it is that's missing. And your job is to find them and to implement them and then get back into action, okay? So I just wanna get really practical here. There's nothing mind blowing about what I'm gonna share with you, but where do you find your how, right? Where's that, where are the resources and the step-by-step -step instructions you need? And you know this already. Right? Obviously, Google, you know, there's this whole new term called just in time learning that's really big in the corporate world. And that's basically, you know, you're, you're working away, all of a sudden you bump into something you don't know and you Google it, right? And, and you find your answers uh, that way. So, just in time learning via Google. Now, YouTube is really great for how to instructions. Like, I'm a visual learner. So for me, you know, I can go to a, a Google page and it's got really long instructions and I, I'm kind of, you know, a little ADD and a little dyslexic and, you know, it takes me a long time to absorb it. But if I go to a YouTube channel where somebody is demonstrating, right, how to do something, it's like I get it right away and I can apply it right away. So, you know, there's a little something for the way you learn. And then social media has become a really great source for knowledge uh, and advice, uh, especially if you belong to a, a Facebook group, uh, like an affinity group. This is actually a, a picture from my Kajabi, which is a, a, a platform for building online courses and products. And they have a user group and people are constantly saying, hey, does anybody know how to do this? Does anybody know somebody who's good at doing this? I need help. And people, they'll get like 40 different responses from people. So it's, I find it, it's very powerful. I post there all the time. You know, and other sources are like Udemy. When you have more time, you can, you can actually do learning like LinkedIn Learning, Skillshare, uh, Wiki, How. Now let's talk about where do you find your who, right? Like you need expertise, you need skills, you need a system to, to, to do something, to keep going. So there are all these resources out there. You may know about these like Fiverr. You can find anybody to do anything on Fiverr. You know, I needed social media marketing help. I needed social media strategy help. I needed someone to help me build sales funnels. I needed somebody to do transcriptions. I needed an editor. You can find them all on Fiverr at a very reasonable cost and everyone's rated. So you kind of know the quality you're getting. Um, I also use Upwork a lot. Upwork is a great resource uh, where you can, again, find any kind of assistance you need. And uh, it's really great for virtual assistants if you ever need a virtual assistant or somebody to just take something over and, and do it for you. And uh, in the creative realm, I don't know if you've heard of 99designs, but that's a great resource. Um, I actually use that to create my logo, the uh, light bulb with the bladder coming out of it. Uh, it was created. Um, for about $400 by somebody in Indonesia, believe it or not. So it was pretty remarkable. And it was an idea I wouldn't have thought of myself, uh, but it was a great resource. And actually I wound up getting about a hundred variations from different contributors. They all compete uh, and you pick the winning design you like. So there are many, many other resources, LinkedIn and Guru and Freelancer and Behance and Creative Mornings has a great uh, guild uh, of other fellow creative types that could help you. And then finally, finding your motivation. Where do you find motivation, right? The emotional support, the encouragement, accountability. You know, you, sure, you can have friends, you can have family, you can have people in your life. That's always the best source. But for me, I, I like to go to the, like the leading people out there, like Tony Robbins, you know, he's talking about motivating and keeping you in action. Lewis Howes is another person. He has a podcast called School of Greatness where he, he 
he interviews all these achievers. You know, Mel Robbins came up with a, uh, a great technique to end procrastination. Chase Jarvis, his whole show is around creativity and interviews artists. And you have Marie for Leo and Brendan Bouchard, who, who is very big on, on peak performance and, and has been researching that. Anyway, online marketing, there's, there's all kinds of resources. You should find your own, collect, you know, create a list on, on your uh, iPod. Um, again, you know, friends, families, podcasts, videos, they're all out there. And if you have the resources, you could also hire a life coach or a business coach or join a mastermind group, which is something that I'm going to be forming because masterminds are fantastic because they're people that are up to the same thing you are and sort of share all your knowledge and wisdom. Or you can join a membership site. A lot of these thought leaders have membership sites, which are very uh, reasonable and, and they create Facebook groups where people support one another. So there's a lot of places where you can find your motivation. So uh, here's one more poll. So now that you know about this, what do you think has been missing for you in order to take decisive action? Have you been missing the who, the how, or the motivation? Let's see where you are. Let's share. Mitchell, if I could just jump in uh, and, and do. do a slight little plug. Um, RISD Alumni Office and Alumni Association has recently launched the RISD Network, which mm. is an online mentoring platform designed to create student and alumni collect, uh, connections, but also alumni to alumni connections. So if you ever find that you're stuck or you're looking to change careers or you're looking for a little bit more guidance from somebody else, who has been in your shoes, who went through the RISD curriculum, I encourage you to join the RISD network. It takes about two minutes to sign up. You can use your LinkedIn profile to manually, uh, to automatically create your profile. Check it out. It's a place for you to find resources and it's also a place for you to help current RISD students. So that's my little plug. Great. Thank I'm, you for I'm letting so me know. I'm so glad you shared that. And just, <laughs> just so everyone knows, I'm actually registered on there as a mentor. So uh, if anybody, does need uh, any help, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to help you myself. So thank you for mentioning that. Oh, thank you for letting me. Um, so 72% have voted. I think I'll give it a couple more seconds, but it seems like right now, majority of the people are, are missing the motivation. Ah. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna end this poll now and I'm gonna share the results so you can all see. Okay, a little, a little over half. You know, and that's interesting because I think as as creative people, um, we we need to be in terms what they call internally referenced, meaning we have to create our own fire in the belly and 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 get ourselves to move. But but it's not always to do. It's it's a lot easier when when you work uh, in a, in a team situation and 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 you know there's there's others to to help move you through there. So that's that's really interesting to to hear. And then yeah. The how and the who are, you know, pretty pretty um, close together there. Wow, that's really interesting. Thank you for sharing. All right, so I'm going to mention uh, we originally had scheduled this uh, for I think two hours. Um, we are going to run over. We're in the we're in the home stretch here, so I'm going to invite you to stick around if you can. Um, we have uh, one more section, a very powerful section to to get through, and that's the creating your uh, breakthrough action plan. Now we're gonna we're gonna stay on for as you know as long as it takes to create to to finish the program, um, but we are towards the the, the uh, finish line here. So let's get to it. Let's now create your breakthrough action plan for success. And before we get into this and actually do the plan, I want to just talk about some ways that you could level up your game. You hear me use that, that phrase a lot. This is all about, you know, going, going to that next level for you. You know, and you, you may feel that kind of hesitation or fear or doubt about what is that next level for you? Because uh, it does exist outside your, your comfort zone. But that's really where you want to go. And, and that's where your life's experiences are propelling you to go. So just some really quick tips. And the first is, I'm gonna encourage you to think as we do the upcoming exercise, I want you to really think about going beyond what's familiar to you, what's reasonable or practical. Sometimes we, we try and come up with really reasonable and practical things we can do. 
Uh, and and I, you know, maybe ask yourself, what actions would be unrecognizable to your normal play it safe self? Okay, that's really a, a very interesting challenge. Like, what would be recognizable? Well, the chances are you're gonna have the thought and you're gonna think like, God, it kind of feels audacious, right? You really want to embrace those bold, audacious ideas for actions, like things that you kind of get a little, uh, you know, again, that zots inside, like, wow, that would, that's really bold. I don't know if I can do that. That's exactly where you want to go, okay? And consider, like, what would someone else do, right? Like, if you knew somebody who was like this real hot shot, high achiever, like, what actions would they take? And then they're not going to take little namby-pamby, you know, baby steps towards something. They're gonna, they're gonna go big and, or go home. And that's kind of a good role model to, to emulate as we do that. And then I always ask myself this question, like, well, if you knew you couldn't fail, what bold new action would you take? You know, that's a, that's a way of sort of getting outside of your, your comfort zone and just say, well, if I couldn't fail, you know what I would do? I would call this person or I would do whatever it takes to, to to you know, find the leading expert and, and get information from them. Or I would take this action regardless of whatever the consequences are. So those are ways that you could really level up your game. So here's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna ask you to look back at either you have your form, your creative breakdown audit, um, or you may have it just written on a piece of paper, but go back to that, that audit there. And here's the steps we're gonna take. I'm gonna ask you to just take a few moments to review your, your, your audit results. Okay, so really just get re-present to it. Select the one area that scored high for a breakdown. And it's an area in which you wanna create a breakthrough. Okay, so those are gonna be your higher scoring numbers. They're gonna be your, your you know, seven, eights, nines, or tens, in whatever areas there they are. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick one of those areas, and then we're gonna use that as the, as the subject of our action plan. Okay, so you're gonna develop an action plan to actually achieve a breakthrough result in that area. Okay, sound good? So that's what we're gonna do right now. So we're gonna take that and take one of those to this action plan. So you're gonna now do this, we'll do it step by step, and you're gonna first choose one of those areas with a very high score and just write down, on a piece of paper, what area have you selected to have a breakdown in? It could be in distraction, it could be in confidence, it could be time, whatever it is for you. What is, what is that area you want to create a breakthrough? So just quickly write down the area. Great. Next, we want to get clear, like what specific breakthrough do you intend to create in this area? So for instance, let's say you're area is confidence and you have self-doubt. So what breakthrough do you want to have in that area? Well, let's see, I have a lot of self-doubt. So the breakthrough I want to create is to find a way to, to, to feel more confident no matter what comes my way. I want, to, I want to find something out there that could help me feel confident whenever I'm feeling that, that self-doubt. Okay, so for you, let's write down what specific breakthrough do you intend to create in this area? Next, just write a sentence about what would real success look and feel like to you? What would real success, if you created this breakthrough, what would it look and feel like? What would the impact be on you? Like, if you didn't have that self-doubt, what would happen? Man, I would be able to ask for promotions. I'd be, I'd be taking more risks in my business. I'd be, I'd be creating gallery exhibitions around the world. I'd be changing the world. So what would, what would success look like? Next, think about how would your work or career or business be different after you made this breakthrough? That's very thought provoking, like, wow. What would that look like? How would it be different? If I had that out of my space, that breakthrough, that breakdown was gone. I was no longer tethered to that limitation. Like I, I can now 
I can now create this kind of work and this kind of career and this kind of business. How would it be different? Okay, now we're going to shift. We're going to shift from reflection to action steps. So the first question is, standing in a place of possibility, what would be the fastest, the easiest, and the most effective way to create a breakthrough in this area? Right? Sometimes we think that breakthroughs have to be hard or complicated or it's going to take a long time. And that's not necessarily true, right? That's just a limiting belief. Sometimes we can do something really quick and easy that's really effective, but we may not know what that is. We, we, we tend to get so caught up in what's wrong that we don't focus on what's possible. So using your intuition and your imagination as a guide, really think about what would be a fast and easy and effective way to create a breakthrough in this area. You know, I know for me, you know, the fastest breakthrough, you know, I, if I'm being a one man band, the fastest, easiest, most effective thing is to go to Fiverr, <laughs> you know, find somebody that rocks the exact thing I need and just hire them, right? They don't have to be expensive. That's the easiest thing. That would, that would help me exponentially. I can make a quantum leap if I did that one last thing, that one thing. So what is it for you? And if you don't know, just pretend you did know. Just put something down, even if it's audacious. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the next one. And this is starting to get really tangible. So what could you start doing tomorrow? You wake up tomorrow, what can you do tomorrow to begin to create this breakthrough? What one action can you take? Is there something you can start to research? Is there somebody you can call? If, can you get up and go into your studio? Is there, can you share what you're up to with somebody? Just what is it that you could start doing tomorrow to get the, the ball rolling, so to speak, to start taking action towards achieving your breakthrough? Okay, next. We want to look a little further down the road. So what can you start doing next week, right, to create your breakthrough? When you look, you're doing a little bit of future gazing, you're thinking, what, what can I do next week to really start to create momentum, to really start to, to, to make progress on, on breaking through this limitation? Now let's look even further down the road. What is it that you could do all this month to create your breakthrough? What can you do every day? What is it you can do consistently over the course of weeks that are just gonna create more and more and more momentum, more, you're gonna take more and more action to create this breakthrough? Now we're gonna look for the who. <laughs> who can help you succeed in taking decisive action? Who is that best person that could do that? Who is somebody who's an unconditional supporter of yours or somebody that shares your passion or somebody that could cheer you on or somebody that can hold you accountable when you're kind of procrastinating a little bit or you're or you're waiting for circumstances to be perfect before you act. Who is that person? Everyone knows somebody, somebody who's reliable, somebody who's gonna really hold you to account, or somebody that's gonna really give you that emotional boost that you need, somebody who's always in your corner, somebody who's always a fan of yours that wants to see you succeed. And the last question is, by when will you complete your breakthrough? And there's an old saying that any kind of goal that has no deadline is just a dream. So we wanna put down a specific, it could be a date or a deadline, 
You can say next Tuesday by 5 p.m. or it could be July 1st. It could be, you just want to get really specific. And even if you don't know how you're going to achieve it, put a date down and then you'll find the how. Remember that? <laughs> when, you, when your why is big enough, you'll find the how. So, and just as a tip, the shorter the, the deadline, the more it'll focus your time and attention because nothing focuses attention more than a short deadline. Okay. So you've just walked through 10 steps that are gonna help you create your breakthrough. And what I would encourage you all to do is to uh, make copies of the action plan or you have your PDF there and repeat this process for each area that had a high score. You can actually do it. It's actually interesting if you do it on all six areas because if you really wanna to start to clear the space of all kinds of breakdowns or setbacks or, or things that kind of snag you, um, this is a great technique to do because it really, it all lays it all out there. What, what it is, uh, why it's meaningful to you, what the actual steps you could take to do it, who can help you accomplish it, and by when are you going to do it. And, you know, the bottom line is to create the kind of breakthrough results you want, you really do need to take the lid off what you believe is possible to do, create, or achieve. In other words, you really want to get outside the box. You want to get outside your comfort zone. And you really want to start to take action in, in ways that you couldn't fathom before. And of course, the minute you start doing that, you may start to feel a little bit of fear or trepidation or discomfort. And the thing um, that kind of always inspired me, there's this great passage from uh, Marianne Williamson called Our Deepest Fear, and you may be familiar with this. And she writes, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. That's so cool. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small does not serve the world. So this is an invitation for you to step up. It's time for you to step up. Wherever you are, you, wanna, you really want to step up to play a bigger game. You don't want to live your life playing a small game waiting for things to return to normal. As we come full circle, things aren't returning to normal. We're heading into the new normal and we can emerge into that new normal powerfully, right? By creating breakthroughs. So you really wanna step up, you wanna play a bigger game for you, whatever that means for you. And you wanna go and create breakthroughs in your work or your business or your career. And this is great saying by Thomas Edison, I love this, he said, if we did all of the things we're capable of, we would literally astound ourselves. So I'm gonna invite you all to astound yourself <laughs> with what it is that you're capable of doing. All right, so I wanna congratulate you all for, for participating full out in this program. And also I just wanna review really quickly what it is that we actually did today. We did a lot. Right? You clarified what your creative challenge was and, and what your breakthrough was, uh, I'm sorry, breakdown was. You sharpened your creative vision or that goal that you want to achieve. You strengthened your sense of purpose, your mission, your why. You really got that stronger. And we diagnosed exactly where your breakdowns were occurring. Remember, we went through those six areas that, that could have an impact on your creative process. And you discovered a lot of new insights about yourself, I hope, and your work and your and all the things that have to do with the way you approach creativity or entrepreneurship, right? And you created your own action plan for transforming your creative breakdowns into a breakthrough. Now, that piece of paper by itself is not gonna do anything. You need to act on it, okay? So I'm gonna challenge all of you to start taking action right away as soon as this uh, webinar is over. And we're going to have one final one sentence power <laughs> to wrap things up. So what I'd really like to hear from all of you is what resonated with you today as your most important takeaway from this program? As remember, I said, 
we're all doing this program together as a group scattered around the world, but each of us are sort of on our own individual journey. And, and hopefully you found something that's really important for you, something that can help open up new doors, empower you, and help you to make the leap to that next level for yourself. So if you could put it in the share box and let's hear as many as we can. Uh, Mitchell, I also had a request. Uh, if you could please bring back on the screen the Marion um, Williamson, I think her last name is, quote. Um, somebody was looking to get see that again. Okay, I'll do that while people are. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, let's see, a lot of people are, uh, Mary said, no action equals no results equals no success. I like that. Um, Christopher said that he realized that he's not alone, which is really comforting. Wow, that yeah. is you know what, that, that is such a profound point mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I can't emphasize enough. We all feel alone, right, we, within ourselves, but we're all deeply connected. Yeah. One of the reasons I created the whole Creative Breakthrough lab and program was, was to help us connect as creators, as, as entrepreneurs. And it's really seeking out connection with other creative people. And again, there's so many ways to do it through RISD, through the Alumni Association. I would encourage everyone to find the Creative Mornings chapter uh, nearby, wherever you live. They're, they're all over the globe. And, and it's like every month they, they do something. They're like little TED Talks where, well, in the old world, people would get together for an event once a month. Now they're doing a lot of things online, but you can really connect with people. So thank you for sharing that. that that's really important. Yeah, some of these are, are phenomenal. So many um, saying how important action is because I've been stuck on the quote, new idea process for 10 years, but have had very little action. I Can I tell you something that's, I'm just gonna start coaching and sharing as we go, <laughs> it's so great. You know, for me, um, that's that's one of the biggest um, challenges I face is that my one of my core strengths is ideation. I mean, I teach people how to brainstorm for a living, right? So I'm always coming up with ideas, but I can spend so much time in in my mental world, but I don't create anything in the physical universe. If that makes sense, that's something mm -hmm. that people can interact with. So you don't want to die with all this gold, you know, all these amazing ideas in your head because we can't see what's in, in your head, yeah. right? So you have to put it down in a form that people can interact with, whether it's visual or verbal or music or performance, or you make a product or you, you create a cause that, that gets people in there. It has to manifest in the physical universe in some way, shape or form. Well, Mitchell, you'll like this one. Some, uh, Sarah said, you reminded me of my ability to be a creative problem solver. Everything that RISD taught me. That's uh, great. It's so true. And you know what? It, I didn't realize that for maybe 10 years uh, outside RISD. I was, I, was in, I was in thousands of brainstorming sessions and we had some really tough challenges and I was always able to come up with something and you know, come up with different ideas. And, different, and somebody was just sound like, 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 wow, where'd you learn that? And I said, I don't really know. But then I realized that Freshman Foundation was all about, you know, solving, you know, all these different challenges on so many different levels and coming up with unexpected and innovative new things. So thank you for, for sharing that. Um, Jennifer said that it's not my lack of skills, talent, or resources. It's self-doubt that can hold me back. Mm, yeah. And Amy is feeling way less alone in her process and situation. So that's what we want to hear, Amy. Yay. We want to hear that. Um, Joan, I am going to try and save, I'm just, Joan uh, said that she'd like to get everybody's replies to keep. I'm going to try and save them. Um, it won't pop up on the recording, but I, I do believe that I can save the chat feature. So I'll, I'll do my best to do that. That'd be great. I would love to publish those. Oh uh, yeah, I, this is, this, this has been the most uh, active participant group of all the webinars I've ever done for RISD. So kudos oh, to everybody. Well, Thank you so everybody much. Everybody around the world, wherever you are, wherever you're sitting. I mean, I really, really wanted to create a connection with all of us together mm -hmm. and all the sharing just you can really hear when you hear other people everybody reflects back some aspect of ourselves like we mm -hmm. realize 
yeah, we do feel a little bit alone. Yeah, I tend to think more than I produce. Yeah, I do have fears. I do procrastinate. You know, it's like suddenly it's like, oh, wow, I'm not so defective or, or you know, we, we tend to be very harsh on ourselves. That's that inner critic. We, we tend to spend a lot of time there. But then suddenly when we hear that we're not alone, it's like, oh, okay, you know, this is great. You feel that even bonds us uh, on, a, on a deeper level. It does. It does. And especially at a time like this, when we're also isolated and unable to see each other yeah. and spend time face to face, you know, to, to be for all of us to understand that we're, we're in this together, you know, and that yeah. we're all in the same boat is really nice. Um, somebody, Margaret said, I think this, let me see. Um, thank you so much. I was hesitant to take part and actually fill out the questionnaires, but writing it down, make it so much easier. Plus to find out that she's not alone in this. Oh, oh this is great. Great. Thank you for sharing that. That's oh, thank you, everybody. This has been wonderful. Yeah, you know, and it's funny because I put these exercises together and then I worry about, oh, you know, are people going to be into this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, is, is it too onerous? Are they, are they going to be going, oh, not another exercise? But, but I do know from personal experience because I, I use myself as a guinea pig at all of these things. <laughs> to, to, and they're all designed to, to, to create clarity and, and, and to help you, you know, see it so that you can act on it. It's all about translating what's in your head into a form that's actionable, if that makes sense. It does. Oh. That's great. Okay, so that's, that's amazing. And I would love to see those. So I'm gonna skip ahead here. Sorry, I have to do it step by step, but that's the technology. I just like to say that um, Sarah is putting out there, Sarah BL, that she would love to team up with someone from this class who's interested in supporting one another through this process outside of the workshop. So um, Sarah, you can email me, uh, kcush, that's K-C-U-S-H, at rusi.edu, and anybody else who's interested in joining Sarah, um, email me, let me know, I'll, I'll make that connection, and again, to push you to the RISD network. This is a great place for you guys to be able to connect and, um, and reach out and speak to one another. So thank you all. That's, that's great. I would love for, you know, and, and it's funny because when we do this live, that's exactly what we do at the end. What we do is uh, they, people sit at tables and they have like table sharing and partners and stuff like that. I encourage people to partner up and become breakthrough buddies and to talk and, and, and encourage each other through the process of actually creating the breakthroughs. So I don't know quite how we do that in a virtual space, but uh, maybe that's something uh, we can work on, Katie, <laughs> if we do this, <laughs> especially if we do this again. Yeah, now, I would love to. I, I, cause it's, it's really important to, to, to have a, a, you know, a partner in crime, as I call it, to, you know, create audacious things that the world hasn't seen before. Um, I just wanted to mention, I, I am creating another program. I'm not promoting the program, but I just want to give you a little back story because creative confidence, and, and to me, creative confidence is all about, you know, self-doubt and judgment, and getting all that stuff out of the space so that we can clear our, our, our psyche to just focus on creativity. But I did develop uh, a, a tool that I, I, I wanted to give away at the end here. It's, it's, it's free, it's, it's just a PDF. Uh, with a three-step process that has been effective. I actually use it in, in my corporate training. Uh, it's just a really kind of quick and, and easy way to transform self-doubts and insecurities into more empowering beliefs, as you could call this a, a belief management tool. Um, and you can download it. Um, and again, I'm so technologically uh, uh, incapable on <laughs> some levels. I couldn't create like a special fancy website like, you know, go to confidence.com, you know. So uh, if you just go to my homepage and it's just mitchellridgey.com, you'll see it there. It's, it's pretty prominent. If you just put in your name and email address, uh, you know, you'll get an email, just confirm it and you'll get the download. And it's something that uh, I think you'll find really helpful. And it's great if you run up against anything uh, that, that's in the way of you taking action. So thank you. And uh, oh yes, finally, there I am in a good shot. And there's my logo that I paid four hundred dollars <laughs> for from Ninety Nine Designs, and I put them on T-shirts. Anyway, and that 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 was actually important for me because it made it more real. And and uh, so anyway, um, I would love to stay in touch with you. Um, you know. I, my, my email address is mitchell at mitchellrigid.com. If you have any questions about anything we've covered or if you want a quote or 
something of, of that nature. Um, you know, just just in just let me know that you were part of this uh, webinar. And uh, you know, I love being in connection with other RISD grads. Um, and I'd love to stay in touch with as many of you as you want. And and um, also, if you like this program testimonials are always helpful because <laughs> I can share them when people say, what is this create a breakthrough lab? I love to share testimonials with people and just say, you know, listen, this is what people have said about it. So uh, you can always email me a testimonial. Okay. And that's the end of my, uh, my personal plug here because I tend to get criticized a lot for not networking and, and, and being savvy in social media and building lists and, you know, being of service to a network. And I, I, I want to change all that. So thank you. And, you know, we can open it up. I mean, we kind of did a little bit of coaching, but, you know, uh, we're coming up um, on the half hour. I'm willing to stay for a little while longer. Katie, are you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm just seeing a bunch of messages come through in the chat that people are interested in potentially forming um, a Slack group. Uh, if you'd like, I'm going to put my email address in here. You can connect with me. And then if you're all comfortable with sharing your information with one another, I can then um, share that information so that you guys are able to connect once, we, once we're done today. So I'm going to put my email address in there now. Any questions about this or any future webinars, just let me know. Great. And, and I promise that in the future, I'm going to develop a Facebook group <laughs> for people who have taken this program so that, uh, that that's also available. So these are, these are my areas for breakthroughs. All right, so, you know, we can open up. So if you have any specific questions about anything we covered or how to apply something or, or how do you overcome something, um, I'll do my best to answer it. And you can just put it in the chat. And um, Katie, if you can read them to sure. me, rather than, because uh, once I get out of the screen, I won't know how to get back in. Um, let me see. Questions. Uh, Amy, I'm not sure if this is a question or a, a statement, but she's saying that since she covers all of her expenses from rental real estate, she's wondering what's next for her creatively, that the jewelry business she had for 20 years has lost its luster to her. Um, and Tiffany is wondering, how do you select one project when you have multiple whys you're passionate about? Oh, okay. Well, let me answer that because that's a much easier question than the real, <laughs> than the real estate jewelry thing. Uh, <laughs> That, that, that we need to dive into a little bit more, but <clears throat> okay, here's an easy hack. I'm gonna call it a hack or, or a trick, or, but, it, but it works. What you should do is make a list of everything you feel passionate about, okay? And just number them, <clears throat> just, you know, one, two, three, four. And just write down like a little quick synopsis, not a whole big thing, like one sentence about it, okay? Write it, then put it away for, a little while and then when you have really free attention and quality time go back open you know take a look at your list and then put your finger on each one and read it and feel into what it is that you've written okay and what's going to happen is somewhere along the line you're going to get this this surge of intuition okay this is off, sometimes I call this divining, right? But believe it or not, your unconscious mind does favor one or, or one or the other or several of them, okay? And what you could do is the ones that you feel this connection or a surge or a zots or whatever you want to call it, just make a, a, you know, a little asterisk or circle the number next to that. You make it more than one. And if you get more than one, then walk away again come back and then divine between those which one you get the, sm the strongest intuitive hit from. And that'll be the, the one. Does that make sense? I think so, yeah. Um, our next question, Harrison is wondering, uh, can you suggest early morning activities which might help get mo getting motivated in the morning for the start of the day? Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you meant physical or emotional. Can you read it one more time? Sure. It just says, can you suggest early morning activities, which might help getting motivation in the morning from the start of the day? Okay. Well, there's a couple of things, you know, because there's, there's the physical and there's the mental. Um, you know, Tony Robbins is a big fan of, of, of creating a, you know, a, a state, you know, where you're energized. So, you know, every morning I do, 
you know, 10 minutes of yoga, you know, because it makes me feel strong in my body and, and healthy. Um, uh, then uh, in the artist way book, uh, she talks about doing um, morning pages, which is kind of free flowing, whatever comes out, you just write down whatever comes out of your mind and you do three pages of that every morning. And really what that does is it lets you just kind of see what, what's in your unconscious and what you've been thinking about and you flow it out every day. That's very creative because you don't edit it, you don't think about it. Um, or you can go to the opposite extremes where you can get a, um, uh, I think it's Brendan Bouchard has what they, he calls a high performance planner. And that's like literally like a planner, like what are you gonna do today? And it makes you put down action steps and things you're gonna take there. Um, but you know, really another thing you can do is you can just sit quietly and just say, if this is the last day of my life on this earth, what is it that I would want to accomplish today, right? If you knew that at 12 midnight, you were going to just not be here anymore, what is it that you would want to accomplish that day in the physical world? Okay, so that's a, range. <laughs> it's a wild range of things. Um, Mark Pack is wondering, how do you figure out what the disconnect with your audience is? You know, it, the, the answer is really simple. Ask them. Ask them, ask them, ask them. Talk to people. Just say, you know, but here's the thing. You can't be defensive because as a creator, we, we tend to be emotionally invested in our, in our uh, works or whatever it is we, we do or produce. Um, but it's almost like you want to do market research because what you think is a great idea, you have a lot of context and, and, and understanding about it and somebody who might be experiencing whatever it is uh, without any of that context may not get it. It may not resonate with them, they, they, or it may be over their head, or it may not be something they're interested in. So I would, I would get a group of people together, or just, you know, you could do it one at a time. Just, just say, like, what do you think of this? And then whatever they say, just say, okay, tell me more about that. And you'll, you'll start to get some feedback. Matter of fact, you know, one of the, one of the things about uh, rapid prototyping um, and, and, and innovation is you put something out there and then you listen to the response and you and, and, and then you take notes on, you know, what 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 clicks with people, what doesn't, what what it is that could be improved. You take that feedback, then you do another iteration and you put it out there. You get more feedback, then you make improvements and you iterate again. So if that's appropriate for what it is that you do or, or what you're talking about, I would, I would suggest doing that, okay? Uh, also, you can look at um, a design thinking process because feedback is a big part of that as well, okay? Mm. Um, Kathleen said you referenced many mindset resources. Do you have a written list of these? I don't, but if you send me an email, and get very specific on what type of resources you'd be looking for, I can certainly put that list down and send it to you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, let me see. The next question is, I've been laid off, oh, I'm sorry, I've been laid off from my fast fashion job that I worked years to achieve and now I'm stuck. I have so many interests and ideas. How do I move forward if I'm not sure I want to jump back into fashion? <laughs> I understand. Fashion is a, is a tough world. Uh, my wife was in it for many years. And, um, you know, this is, this is really <clears throat> where you want to um, connect to your, um, connect to your, your passion because you, um, there's something that I had in this presentation that I, um, I took out, which is an Iga guy. Let me see if I can spell it here. It's I K I G I, I think. I A Iga guy. Anyway, who wrote that? Um, give me one second. That was um oh my gosh, I just it just disappeared from you know my what? screen. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. What I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I guess you can see my screen now, right? That was Marcella wrote that. All right, Marcella? Yes, there you can, my, you can see my screen, right? Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. okay, I'm gonna actually hunt for something because I think it's so important. 
uh, and it was great value for others. So let me see if I can find this quickly. You'll see my kind of messy process here. I have an image, so that's why I'm going into all these images and hopefully I can find it relatively quickly. Dun, 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 dun. These are all the images that were used in this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> here you go. This is what I'm looking for. This might be incredibly helpful. Can I actually, actually, I'm gonna open up the other version of this. Hang on, sorry. <clears throat> okay, this is a, uh, uh, an Iki guy, I believe it's pronounced, and it's pronounced, here's the spelling of it. It's a Japanese concept that means reason for being. And I think this would be the perfect tool for you. This is, you can look at this up online. This is, there's gazillions of uh, things about it, but, but basically in a nutshell, <clears throat> the way it works is that you look at these four quadrants, <clears throat> what it is that you love to do, what you love, what you're passionate about, what you're good at is another circle, <clears throat> what the world needs, and then what can you get paid for? Okay. And it's really interesting because you do them as overlapping circles. And you can see that if you just start to really think about what do you love? What are you good at? What does the world need? What can you get paid for? You can see that in, within the different spheres, you know, what you can get paid for can become a profession or a vocation. What the world needs can become a mission or a vocation. What you love could become a mission or it could be a passion project, right? What you're good at could be a passion project or a profession. So it's all intertwined. And again, if you Google this online, you'll be able to go by through a step-by-step -step process. This is actually something that I, I was very interested in and I did my own version of this. And what I discovered is that my passions were, um, you know, I did four circles and one was creativity because I love all things about creativity. I love personal development. I love um, positive psychology. And I love peak performance uh, tips and tricks and all that stuff. And I put them together. And that's really where the Creative Breakthrough Lab came from. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Marcella said that is so brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for answering her question. Oh, my pleasure. Um, so we have a few questions coming in. Um, let me see what's here. Irene is asking, how can I get the time to dedicate to relaunching my art as a mother of two children who are three and six years old and already working as a freelance ESL university teacher that quote, pays the bills. Part of me thinks I need to start small yet this workshop talks about going big. How, when my family and job take so much of my time already? Okay, that's a whole, <laughs> uh, actually, actually um, I've dealt with this a lot and Here's, here's what I'll say. Uh, I, I don't have a simple answer, but I could kind of provide a few little tidbits here. Uh, the first thing is you don't find time, you make time. Okay, so that's the first thing. So it's got to be a deliberate act. And how do you do that? Well, um, it's interesting because I always think of time as a container. And, you know, everything that goes into the container defines, you know, what it is that you're capable of doing. Um, but you can, you can create time. You can get up one hour earlier or go to bed one hour later. So over the course of a week, that's seven days. And over the course of a month, it's, you know, <laughs> it gets exponential. So that's a way to get a little bit of time. And that might be time for thinking. Um, the other thing is to create structures that could help take care of the kids. Maybe there's some support to give you some free time. Um, also, there are things to consider, like there's, there's uh, like time that's good for deep work, which is blocks of uninterrupted time, and then there's time where that's very good for multitasking. So maybe within the course of your day, with all the things that you do, maybe there's 15 minutes here or 20 minutes there or whatever, or you can get, like I say, you can get somebody to watch the kids or take care of something, or you can go out for, you know, for a small period of time, step out of your life, so to speak, to think about things or start to actionize on certain things. Also, you want to pay attention to when your peak performance time of day is, 
because if you're a morning person, whatever you want to really create, you want to do that in the morning. Um, or if you're a night owl, you'll want to do it in the evening. Uh, because that can impact time. So, so if you want to be the most efficient, you want to carve out time however you can uh, at the time of day when you're the most alert and active. All right. I wish I, I, wish I had a simpler answer other than sure. you got to put some kind of structure in place that doesn't exist to create, uh, like I call them boundaries, like create a boundary around your time somehow. And it may involve other people or, or doing less things that you're currently doing now. Great, thank you. Um, Mitchell, Laura R. has a question. Um, she's had some hard times. She was set back majorly at the beginning of her career by 9-11 and then 2008 yep. recession and then Sandy and now this. Yep. yep. But she's saying there's always will be something and she's more resilient now. But uh, she's, she's feeling um, overwhelmingly discouraged by still being in a state of indecision and fear slash regret. And she's just kind of wondering, like, how do you move past that? How do you okay. make it happen? Is she talking about the, what's on the news? Um, I think it's, she's saying that, um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, let me see. Laura, if you could chime in again really quick. Um, she just feels like she's been, she's been trying for such a long time, and it's, it's not working for her, and it's not for lack of trying. And I think she's just looking for a little bit more of um, – how to get out of that state of indecision? Well, you know, that's, that again, that's a longer conversation. Um, because there's probably a fear uh, somewhere. There's a limiting belief that's keeping her stuck. You know, it's funny. Uh, you know, one of, one of the definitions of insanity, as you know, is doing the same thing over and over and over again. So if, 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 if a condition is persisting for a long time, uh, what, what that means, at least to me from a, from a coaching perspective, is, is there hasn't been something else to change that dynamic, okay? And it might be something bold, like you may have to just, I, I use the term step out of your life, step out of the day-to-dayness of life. Um, listen, as a New Yorker, I, you know, I've been through 9-11, I, I've been through the, the, the crash in 08 and, you know, what we're going through now. But it's really tapping back into that RISD creative problem solving. Um, whatever it is that's, that's ahead for you is probably something different from what you're doing and different from the way you habitually think. Okay, you're thinking in, and I call it the, the hamster wheel. It's like you're, you're kind of thinking the same way about things you're discouraged. So now you have a story um, again, this is, this is like a whole nother program. It's like, how do we get out of our stories? How do we get out of the discouragement? How do we get out of our, our movies? And unfortunately, this is, you know, this, it's, it's hard if you're spending a lot of time by yourself trying to figure this out. You know, the, it, and I don't know if you have the means for it, but, you know, finding a life coach or, or, or somebody, it doesn't have to be somebody you pay. It could be somebody who's really kind of smart and resourceful. Or you can maybe barter with somebody who's a life coach if there's something that you could offer them. But you, you really want to start thinking outside of your day-to-day -day life and start trying on kind of new perspectives. Uh, you know, it's easy for me to say, hey, listen, whenever I got down back in the day, I mean, I've been doing personal development work for 40 years, right, to, you know, kind of keep myself going forward. Um, but doing a personal development program, it could be like a Tony Robbins uh, program or something like that, just to hear another perspective or another way to go. Uh, there's uh, Marie uh, Forleo, who's who's very good. You can look them up on the uh, the internet, or you can just start listening to podcasts. You you need to introduce new perspectives into your. You know, our, our minds are like sponges, and or I'll even use a different analogy that I use in my training is as I call it stocking the pond. Um, and this comes from the artist's way. They say, if, if you never put anything new in your, in your head, uh, then you're always catching the same fish. It's always, you know, you, you, and you'll wind up depleting it. So you want to keep stocking the pond with new and different perspectives and new and different stimuli. So start reading about successful people, people who have reinvented themselves. 
listen to podcasts. I'm telling you, there are so many great motivational podcasts. And what happens is you start to hear these things and then the, you start making new connections and you'll start thinking about things in new ways. And, and that's really, you know, sort of the simplest, fastest, lowest tech, cheapest, most inexpensive way to do it is just start listening to podcasts, start looking at, at, at uh, you know, and also um, you can investigate things like NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming um, is, is, a, is a great thing to just start to, this is what I do all the time because I, I constantly need to kind of grow and expand. So that's a long winded answer. I hope there's something in there. <laughs> No, thank you. I think um, our last question of the day uh, comes from Ram, and he they say negotiation in life, work, and business is so important. Sure. How to master in the art of negotiation? How do you get what you want? You know, it, it's it's like I I prioritize what's important to me, and I realize that everything is going to be a trade off. Like if I want to create a block of time to create something. I have to give up something. Um, you know, right now I find my attention is being pulled. Like we watch Cuomo's briefings every morning, you know, and there are things that other things that are all competing for my attention. And I have to be very uh, um, kind of ruthless. It, this comes into the area of creating boundaries uh, for what you want to do. So what I do is I decide I want to work for X number of hours and I alert people not to, disturb me. I, I make arrangements so that I have that time. I put on my headphones if, if I need to and, and hyper focus. Or if things, uh, it, see there's so many areas to talk about in this, but, but basically what you have to do is really make a list of what's important to you. What is it that you want to, to, to create boundaries around so that you're not doing a lot of negotiating on an ongoing basis. That you can just, it's like you take a stand and you just say, I need this, this is important to me. What is it that I need to do? What do I need to give up? Who do I have to negotiate with? And in every situation, there's always three options. You can, you can say yes, no, or negotiate, right? And, you know, most people are fine with that. So I, you know, we, I, I need much more specific uh, situations to be able to really guide you. But that's, that's kind of what it is. It's, it's knowing what's important to you and then doing whatever you can do to create whatever it is you want and create boundaries and, and eliminate tolerations from your space so that you have clear, clear space in which to create whatever it is you want to do. Okay. And if you want a more specific answer, you can, you can email me and uh, you know, with a specific and I might be able to give you a little bit more advice. All right. So uh, again, there's so much I wish I could cover and uh, <laughs> I promise you I'll create another program that deals more with these issues. And, and Katie, if you'll have me back, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for the- uh, um, It would be my pleasure. This has been such a treat, such a nice change of pace for me and, and I'm sure everybody else who has participated. Mitchell, I cannot thank you enough. This, is, well, thank, this has been wonderful. Thank you, thank you for persevering. I mean, we've, <laughs> we've, we've been working to get to this place for what's like, you know, six or eight months. I, think, I know, right? I know. And, and you know, trying to find venues and all that stuff. And, and then suddenly it's like, no, we can't even do that. We got to go online. And what's interesting for me, and I want to thank everyone for, for, your, for your participation because uh, I told my wife who's sitting right next to me, we work like six inches apart mm -hmm. here. Um, <laughs> you know, I told her, I said, wow, I have no idea how this is going to go because I'm usually in a room with people. I'm making eye contact and I can read the room and people can share in person. And, and I said, I don't know what this is going to be like. And what if nobody contributes and nobody's involved and, you know, it won't be a disaster. You know, so I have the same doubts and fear and all that <laughs> stuff. But ultimately, you know, uh, the philosophy I adapt is I said, you know what? It's going to be flossom. It's going to be fabulous, <laughs> going to be fabulous and awesome, and it's going to be flawed. You know, it's going to yeah. be all those things. But but everybody who's on this on this webinar has really, really, really made a difference in my they life, have. and I think really for each other. That was that was my 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 intention was to make it so that we were all together and connected in some way, shape or form. And Katie, I, I really, I have to thank you because oh. you just, you, you just really helped bring people's contributions alive. 
the way you read them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I was I was experiencing them through you. So. Oh, it's thank it's all my theater training. My my uh, life as an actor. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so grateful. <laughs> you have to be my sidekick for now. I'm I'm there, Mitchell. Anytime you need me, I've, yeah. I'm there. Um, I just want to remind everybody who participated, I will send a recording of this to your email. I've also received some requests for the PDF. I'll resend that. Um, It'll go on the website. We are doing additional webinars. We have a webinar a week now through the end of May. So keep an eye on your emails. Take a look at the alumni website. We'd love for you guys to participate. They're all free. They're all really relevant to what's happening right now. So um, we hope that you find them useful. And uh, Mitchell and Liz, thank you again. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And to all of you, (laughs) please move forward powerfully, take action tomorrow, put all this stuff into action, okay? And make me proud. And also, please email me, let me know how it's going, okay? If there's any way I can support any of you in there, I I love doing this. This is this is my why. So, and and thank you all for participating. All right. Great. Everyone have a wonderful day and um, take care of yourselves. Stay healthy and safe. Okay. Safe. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care.